says that? Nate Bargatze. Yeah. He did say that. I said I don't like listening to music a lot. Like, it takes a lot of concentration away. What's his name? Uh, it says that too. Um, uh, it's my friend, and I'm blanking completely on his name after a night of partying. Uh, from The Daily Show. What's his name? Uh, John Stewart. No, no, no. <laughs> no, John Oliver. No. Yeah, Trevor Noah. <laughs> Craig Kilborn. No. <laughs> um, what's his name? Mike. The the uh, this the comic. Mike Yard. No, 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 no. The comic of the Daily. Good looking kid. He's a stand. Costa. Costa. Michael Costa. Shit. Sorry, Mike. I was really blanking there. Costa straight up has said, "I don't like music." I like. I think it's like distracting. Like he doesn't want it. He doesn't like putting it on. That's There's something missing. Odd. There's something missing to you. <laughs> That's how you feel. It's the bonfire, everybody. Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Big J Okerson. Dan Soder, filming Billions. They had to do it out in Utah. They needed desert plains to shoot the UFO scenes. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. Um, <laughs> stay tuned for what happens with that. Giamatti is really taking a left on this one. <laughs> Uh, sitting in for him, you know him, you love him. It's a hilarious Joe DeRosa. Hi. Good hey. to see you. Good to see you all. We had a, uh, man, what a killer night. Fun, fun night last night. The best. It was a good one. The best. No, I do. Uh, Soder was very much missed. Uh, that group could have been 10 more people bigger that would have just, uh, as the night moved on, you were just like, ah, they would have enjoyed this. They would yeah. have enjoyed this. DJ Lou would have enjoyed it yeah. for the amount of time he was be willing to stay there. Yeah. <laughs> Before he went to awkwardly go smoke a cigarette or something weird. I got to tell you, I was so rocked. You could have told me right now Soda was there. And I would have been like, oh, yeah? All right, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We hugged a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were all pretty whacked. <laughs> Fun whacked, though. It hit yeah, right. It was, oh, it was great. We man. found, well, we also didn't know what our tickets were. Right. When I got them, it's how it works when you buy from your agency. Right. Is you get the best, ava- they say, best available tickets at face value. And we were eight rows back from the stage on the floor and it was just a perfect view you didn't miss anything jacob no i mean like, it no, was crazy. best seats in the house I, I i honestly think any closer you you risk obstructing vision a yeah, little you bit just miss and you just kind of miss you might miss something yeah it was literally perfect seating it was it was it was as good it was as it as it could get i i felt a little guilty not being a hardcore tool fan, uh, getting seats that good, or being in a seat that good. You left a hardcore tool fan. Yeah, I, I came back around. I was like, I forgot how many songs I like by these guys. And I also, I was saying this to Justin after the show. I was like, you know, it's one of the same reasons I like Zappa. Like you can isolate Zappa records and go, I like that one. I don't like that one. I like that one. This one's a little weird. But it's it's about stepping back and seeing the forest, not the trees, right. and it's all sort of connected together. It's one big thing, and I realized that about Tool last night. I was like, oh, okay, the albums I'm not that into are sort of connective tissue, bring keeping the whole thing, yeah. you know, together, whatever. And I it was it was a new way to see them. It was awesome. At their age, <clears throat> also just unbelievable performing. Yes. Jacob. I'd love to know your thoughts on the concert. We that was one of the best shows I've seen. Yeah, well, oh, I've never. That's one of one of the greatest drum, if not the best drumming I've ever seen live. I mean, unbelievable. And I've Danny Carey seen some great yeah. drumming. It's fantastic. I think he did. Uh, he has like a whole a gong. solo on a yeah. gong. This big gong that's like sounds like thunder when he hits it in the middle, and it's like all tinny out. It was fucking crazy. It yeah, was, that was super weird. I mean, in a good way. Yeah. I, never, I never saw a gong utilized like that. Maynard knows how to come out. And, I mean, you saw him. I don't know if how much familiar you are with how the band looks normally. I'm not. I mean, Christine, if you could bring up a picture of Maynard, James, he is, I mean, like, just normal in life, not like a uh, for stage. He, he does character on stage. He's always wearing, that, that hair is fake. His mohawk is fake. He had all the makeup on it. It makes him look so, he dresses all weird, and it makes him look so cool. And by day he is like a very meek looking yeah. guy, and but when he don't stay, he's a rock star, man. Jesus, he was killing it. He I was, was so uh, I was jealous of him, because I was like, I wish my body was good enough that I could wear plaid pants, pants? and look yeah. fucking cool, you know. Yeah, yeah he's that's... that guy on the left, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's uh, yeah, he's he's an. I mean, if you did, he's a nerdy looking dude. I mean, let's oh, yeah. be honest, you know? Well, I mean, besides Tool, he does other bands, but he also does, uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's how he looked last night. With yeah. a faux hawk. 
Yeah, it's not even a fo- I mean, it's a faux hawk in every sense of the word. Yeah. And that the whole thing is, uh, I have a faux hawk. That is a mohawk wig. But yeah, that's how he looked last night. I mean, so cool to just know to do that and look awesome. Yeah, I know. I know. It's- because if you put that on and went to like Denny's, you'd be a jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you did all that, we'd go, you'd look like an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> but like on stage, it was just the way he danced around and stuff, and just it was great. Yeah, it was great. I was really, and then everyone it was such a lovey dovey. Yeah, we went back to Justin's house. Yeah, rocked it out. Nice. Jacob checked out earlier that. Yeah, nice after. Were you at Justin's? Mm-hmm. Him and Fenoy came for like five minutes. I didn't even. I don't even remember seeing you at Justin's. I apologize. Yeah, I, was, I was there. I was. I was. <laughs> I was out of sorts <laughs> by that point. Fenoya's was. always... Fenoya t- <laughs> left with you because Fenoya is always uh, technically ready to leave five minutes before you get to wherever you're going with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, And I appreciate that because I also... Cause most of the time I'm the same way. He, But he, he pulled he pulled the, uh, the ripcord, man. He, he was... Something changed because beginning of the night he was in it to win it. He's like, "What are we doing? Are we getting beers? Let's go to that bar." And no, do he, shots uh, he, before. he came to rock. His thing was that uh, in actuality, he was on Jim and Sam this morning, eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, so. I think maybe the reality of that was settling in the later it yeah. got, and it was like, "Oh shit, I got to do radio tomorrow." You know, at seven p.m., you're like, "Fuck it, man, it's rock and roll." <laughs> but they brought out, yeah, they brought the uh, artist Alex Gray at the end, who does a lot of their uh, visual shit. So oh. amazing. Was it you I said this to when they go Alex Gray and they brought him out? I got super excited and then I realized yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. I thought they meant Alex Lifeson from Rush. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yeah. Wait, who's Alex Gray? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, thank you for your pictures. And then, what? <laughs> you said what was that? Can I say one of my the best parts of the show was that they made everyone turn their phone off, which I was so happy. No uh, phones. Yeah, Nobody yeah. got the film. It was great. And, the very, and, just for, had to... and for that last song, he tells you you can't. You see all the phones out there because Man. this is the last song, and that's what they said. He, he says, "All right, you can take your phones out now." And, and they did. And film this, but they, yeah, but they were policing. <laughs> but they policed it the whole show. So it's said so you look back and around. Uh, Christine pointed out to me at one point. I pointed out to Jacob. I go, "Turn around, dude. No phones. Right. Everyone's just yeah. staring and and dancing and and having a great time. Like, yeah. It's and they just like strictly enforce it." It's cool. It's also cool that their fans are cool enough to respect the rule. Well, it wasn't. You know what I mean? Just I mean, it wasn't. So Andy it wasn't Fiori. Like a warning. If you took, if they saw a phone out, it was like an automatic that injection. Oh, Fiori okay. kept trying okay. to slide a few in. Christina, the karate chop his hand down. She's like, dude, they're gonna kick you out. Yeah, I went club manager on him. <laughs> He's always looking for trouble. That kid. He's just like get it up against, like, <laughs> you know, up against his tits. Put it down. Yeah. I'm like, Stop, embarrassing dude. the group. I've taken a million videos and pictures at a million concerts. I've never once ever went back and looked at one of them. If ever. I have, I've always realized that I go, man, the moment, like, I remember what I was recording being so much awesomer. It's like, yeah, because yeah, you weren't watching it on a fucking telephone. Right, right. You watched it in person. I tried to record. I'm bummed that I spent, and I only did it for like a few seconds, like 30 seconds. But like when Phil Anselmo came out on Shiprocked in the middle of the night on the deck cruise, they were just doing like a bunch mm-hmm. of like, jam stuff with all the bands that were on the cruise ship would come up mm-hmm. and just do like super group shit and just do covers mm-hmm. and uh phil ensemble came out with rex brown they were both in two different bands on the boat who's rex brown the bass player from pantera oh okay shit and uh, Never knew his and name. then just like the drummer from anthrax and mike portnoy and uh the you know dave ellison from megadeth and all these guys on stage oh, cool. and they come out and they did five pantera songs back to back i recorded 30 seconds of one song and even trying to explain to people, it was one of the most epic, legendary things I've ever seen happen. Uh, you're like, and look at this, you know, and it's like, <laughs> which, <laughs> which songs do <did> they do? <laughs> it's like just all you hear people around you. This is great, Camp. Yeah. This is fucking awesome, man. Give. <laughs> what songs do they do? Mouth for War, Five Minutes Alone. I can't remember this. Five Minutes Alone. Mm. Any of the hits? I'm broken. Cowboys from Hell. I think, no, I don't think they did Cowboys walk. from Hell. Walk. They did do Walk, right? Yeah. They did Walk, but he did a... Uh... They didn't do... they Because they played twice, and I think they did it one night, not the other. What? Walk. Oh, maybe. Oh, okay. They're all dead now, except <clears throat> Phil and the bass player, right? 
Phil and Rex, yeah. Wait, and that's why Vinny I said Vinny died, right? Yeah. yeah okay. The two brothers are dead. Um, that well, would bum me out. I was trying to find... Jake, maybe I should have called you if you would have cared at all. But the two Saturdays ago when I was in town, Ministry and Slayer. It's like Slayer's last tour ever. Yeah. We're at the Garden. I, just, I really don't give a shit about Primus Slayer. Primus was on it, too. Yeah. Uh, so people, the bad reviews, Primus. What'd uh, they say? I just The stuff I read was just like, there's awful. It sounds awful live and... Oh really? Yeah, um, Ministry. I didn't see Slayer. I just don't give a shit about outside of Raining Blood. I I don't. Their songs make no sense to me. It's just <laughs> one noise over and over again, and then the next song. If you leave and come back, two different songs, you won't know it's different. Songs. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't move. They just stand in place. They, they you know they look cool, but like I was gonna. I was go never to... know. But the early the early early band, the opening of all that was uh, Phil and Samo and the Illegals, and mm-hmm. they were doing only. Pantera songs. Oh, that's cool. They're doing like six, seven Pantera songs, and that's the set. And I, I was like, I reached out to Lewis, was the other person I tried. Cause I was like, Dude, I'll grab tickets right now if you want to go and just watch. So we could leave right afterwards, and he was yeah. he was just going to a gig, so he couldn't do it. But I would have saw fun. that, and I would have went to see that, <laughs> that in Primus. Um, I'd stay th- for Slayer if anybody wanted to stay that bad. I just Slayer, really don't give a shit not, about Slayer. It's not full, like, Lombardo's not there. Like, the, you know, it's not... From Slayer? Yeah, it's like a different drummer. It's the fair... I think it's a farewell tour, but it's not the whole lineup. It's like one of those sure things. sure about that? Lombardo, apparently... Because I was talking to Burr about going, and he was like, fuck, Lombardo's oh, Ga- not with Slayer. I think Gary Holt's in Slayer now, which is like... From Exodus, that's, that's pretty awesome. That's cool, but Lombardo to me is a, is a god, and he is you know he's the backbone he Slayer. He died, no, he just right? isn't. I thought he died. Dave Lombardo? No, no, no. He tours a lot with. Uh, he plays a lot of. He does a lot of stuff with Mike. Patton. Somebody in Slayer died. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. Somebody did. And it was like wasn't it like a fucking like a bee stung his throat or something. I don't I, remember. I, it might be something like that. Look up Slayer. But it's like between yeah. the guy that died and then the Lombardo not being there. They had a tumultuous split with drummer Dave Lombardo. Uh, he wants to set the record straight. Tom Araya uh, gives one of the most direct assessments of what happened via the band's point of view to date. He reveals the issues that led to Lombardo's ouster actually began with his return to the band after Paul Bostaff's first exit from the group. I love when you don't know the names of band people <laughs> and they tell you, when people talk to you like that. I, I had a couple people do that like to me. Yesterday, I saw people I know from like those concerts, and I went to say hi to them, and they're like, "Yeah," he goes, "You know, it's always like, you know, Jerry Conway is uh, is playing again. Back, and it's always with these bands with uh, you know, playing again with uh, you know, one of those bands, like Exeter Testament." And I'm like, "I don't do what <laughs> oh, Testament." Like, what you, I go, "What do I look like? I listen to dude. it. Ain't Testament." <laughs> So uh, what happened? He said, I'd come back for a tour or two, and then... Uh, uh, three of terms of giving the drummer what he wanted. They came up with a deal for him, but he refused to sign it. We had some obligations that came up. When you're given an ultimatum or put on the spot, you have to do something, so we move forward, and Dave got really upset. We went back to him again, told him if he signed the deal, we could move forward, but he had other plans. So we made a phone call to him and ended it because he was beginning to put us into a bad spot. He right. was a drooling slob of a human. <laughs> uh... He, I don't want to say anything bad about him, but he did what he did, and we had to move forward. He was beginning to put us all in bad light. We didn't want to stop the wheels from turning. Yeah. All right. Whatever. It doesn't sound that bad. But that's... You like him in the band that would matter to you? He, uh, Lombardo that, is, you know, one of my favorite, easily top three drummers in rock music, period. Um, he's up there really? with Neil Peart. Uh, dude, he's insane. He's I'm not, so I'm not good, saying you're man. wrong. I, I, yeah. it's fine. I feel like I always know like the names of, like the big time drummers. He's a pretty. He's a pretty notable drummer. He plays a lot with. He plays in a lot of stuff with Mike Patton, like in, in Tomahawk, shit like that. Uh, he's on Tomahawk. John Stainer from Helmets and Tomahawk, who's also awesome. Lombardo's in Phantomus, though. He's just a fucking an unreal drummer, and he's one of the reasons I like the Slayer stuff. I do like a lot of it has to do with his drumming, so I know it's going to sound arguably the same. Um, but it's just like you're not I don't know, you're not seeing Slayer. One Turn guy's it up. dead, it's, Turn it up, he's dude. not there. This is him. <laughs> we got it right at the slowdown part of the solo. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, I think I can do this stuff.
I gotta tell you something. He, he's he's really good. I don't no, no, think this no, is. No, no, no. He's good. he's very good. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not arguing that at all. I mean, he's a drummer for Slayer. It's difficult for sure. I just never like overheard their drummer being like a guy people. T- I was always, to me it was always Tom Araya and uh, Kerry King were the only names that anyone really. That's I do, I I know so little about Slayer. I don't even know those names. I mean, isn't it, isn't it a different singer too? Raining Blood, dude. If they open with yeah. Raining Blood, that I would song fuck, I would that never al- see. I would never know a second song by them. That album is awesome. That song is awesome. That's the only one I ever had, but it's Rain a great Blood. one. That album is classic. I just like that song even. I think the album was like not twenty. To speak, not to speak ill of the dead, but uh, when I was on, when, when I was out with Motorhead, or the times I've seen Motorhead on like festivals and mm-hmm. shit. Every time, like I really. Uh, um, I think every song sounds like Ace of Spades. <laughs> like they, I, so many songs start the same exact way that I go. I go uh, to Christine. We'd see me. I go. I go. Ace of Spades. Here we go. And then you just realize, like when you start singing, you're like, this is not Ace of Spades. He, uh, I, look, Motorhead is in, it was probably my second favorite band of all time. But there really? is yes, absolutely. I fucking love Motorhead. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, I can't argue that point. They have a very s- distinct thing that they do, which is why I like them. But even, and he, great, he was sick as shit at the time. I'm not making fun of him for this. But Lemmy, there's a clip of Lemmy, and they're doing the encore for their show, or, or the closer, and they're doing uh, the song Overkill, and he's really sick, and he starts singing Ace of Spades over it. So even Lemmy... Got confused about his own songs at one point. Oh, I guess we're doing Ace of Spades yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, there, I, I can't argue that. It's like I love Bad Religion, but I can't sit here and be like, they, the, the songs, they sound the same. <laughs> you know? Christine had a blast at Bad Religion, and her big sign of how great the people who like Bad Religion are is they crowd surfed a wheelchair. It was awesome. Oh, I never Wait, did seen you it go, before. You didn't go in LA without me, did I you? I didn't go in LA. I went okay. in Montreal on the Friday, Pennywise and Bad Religion. How, were, how uh, was the show? I didn't I didn't get to go on this tour. It was super fun. Yeah? Yeah, it was the first time I'd seen them in like 10 years. And they maybe. crowd surfed a wheelchair? They crowd surfed a wheelchair. Yeah, they held him up and then it just kind of, I mean, it was like a slow crowd surf. It sounded like they were presenting him to this stage a little bit. <laughs> but I just, in all my years in concerts, right. I'd never seen a wheelchair Throw this gimp up surfed. there. It was awesome. <laughs> The uh, I I was shocked by this because they're pretty like evolved dudes. But uh, I one of the times I saw them at the Electric Factory in Philly, a guy fell crowd surfing and like really fucking hurt himself. Like they had to take him out on a stretcher. I mean, he might have been paralyzed for all we knew. And they had to stop the show. And then Greg Graffin was just like, "Oh well, that's what you get for crowd surfing." All right, everybody. And I was like, "What a uh, dick!" That's the right response. <laughs> well, don't be an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little... I'll tell you, kids, crime doesn't pay. Shit, I keep touching my mic. Sorry, Lou. Okay. Lou warned me before. Don't, it's fine. I do it, Don't too. move the cocksucking mic, he said. No. And he pissed on me. Fucking Sirius XM, get microphones that make fucking sense. <laughs> well, you know, they got to finish that stern wing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are they putting, yeah, they're putting in a new chandelier in there, I think. <laughs> Let us finish the, ha- the new Howard mural, <laughs> and then we'll look into this mic situation. <laughs> bringing in artists from all around the world to paint it. <laughs> Have you heard of Alex Cross? I spent a weird He's amount of time. <laughs> I spent a lot of time with... Or uh, Gray. Sorry. Fuck. Alex Gray. Alex Cross is a Tyler Perry character. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's it a is. Tyler Perry detective movie. His one action flick. <laughs> I just love... Uh, Tyler yeah. Perry is Medea for fucking 15 years, and then it's like, Tyler Perry is... Was it Alex Cross? Alex and you're Cross. like... But like Alex Cross is then also Medea. Like, it's so no, funny. Fat Tyler Perry was an action star for one movie. They're like, yeah, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> oh, oh my he god, he's gonna be the new Larry Fishburne. <laughs> Becky, what kind of music do you like when you do listen to music? What is you have? Do you have like a favorite band or anything? Yeah, totally. You like lots of solo singers mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your favorite? Um, like Amy Winehouse or Nina Simone, Ruth Franklin. Oh, okay. I'm kind of That's stuck on stuff. stuff like that. I thought it was going to be the kind of nonsense girl stuff that Christine listens to. Like what? Ani DeFranco. Oh, shit. Tori yeah. Gamos. Regina Spector. Yeah. yeah whoever Fiona Regina Spector is. Ani to fucking yank off. Yeah. <laughs> old Yanko. Ani DeFranco. And some fucking poon punch named, uh, what's the guy you like? Ray, Ray Lamontong. Lamontong. 
<laughs> you like the Indigo Girls? You know that Lilith Fair foresty fucking horse shit? No, she doesn't actually like, like that. I like a lot of, uh, you know, what could be considered lesbian rock, but not a lot of the actual... Li- like, I'm not super into Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> you, know who's, you know who's really into that shit? Gino Biscotti. Gino Biscotti, I was gonna... Really? Which is why it was so funny when he was getting attacked on a show and people were saying he was a sexist. I was like, this guy literally for years carried a notebook to write jokes in that had the words Sarah McLaughlin <laughs> embroidered on the front It was of it. Lilith Fair merch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. His joke book yeah. was Lilith Fair merch, unironically. No, he loved, he loved, he would go to the Lilith Fair every year. Yeah. Wow. Every year. Gino was into, he's into like sad girl rock. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> that's how he beats himself to make pens for all the things he's done. <laughs> I told you, uh, me and Christine went with, uh, it was Ari, Chrissy, and Soder, and who, uh, Emily from. We all went to see Florence and the Machine with, oh, yeah. at the Barclay Center, and God, I've never. I, I've heard of that band a million times. I don't know one song. She could sing. Is she She's really great? I fell in love with her hey, latest album and got hey, to see that hey, tour. But it's definitely hey. like it would have been more fun with just girls. Hey, like I was. She a could dan- sing. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. I hate it already. <laughs> she did say the words toxic masculinity at the concert. Really? What yeah. if that's a surprise? Is, is her name Florence or is that just the name yeah. of the band? Is it's it like name. Hootie and the Blowfish where it's, there's no Hootie? No, that she, is no her she's name. Florence. She's and Jay okay. actually, like, there's a song with her and Calvin Harris that Jay likes. Her name's like Florence McPotato or something. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, this fucking ukulele music stinks. <laughs> it does stink, dude. There it was, does. There Some of people even go, what about this I song? And I go, a different song. <laughs> no. They go, well, maybe this one, Jay? No. Even Mumford and Sons can get me on a couple songs. I go, all right. I fucking am not into Mumford and Sons. I can't listen oh, to the recorded music live. at all. It's honest I've, to God, seeing them live. I've, I've seen great. them live. Really? Yeah, they're fucking foot stomp. Barn dance horseshit. You don't know, like a hoedown? <laughs> I can't. I think they. Cha- I think they changed their, yeah, more their music style because like it's not really like that anymore. But they were. Uh, I saw them in concert at Bonnaroo. Yeah, that's saw, where I saw them. And we saw them at the gar. Oh yeah, we were. Yeah, we all Bonnaroo together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought that was great. You didn't think it was great? Look, I just like with Florence and the Machine. I obviously these people are very talented. It's just not for me. It, you know, another band like that is who sings "Sex Is on Fire." Kings of Leon. Kings of Leon, I can't fucking get into. I just yeah, can't, I can't get either. into it. I respect them. I just can't. I'm not into it. I don't like Coldplay. Ugh. <laughs> no. Never? Never, not once. I like some But I, I respect them. He's good. They're like, like, you know. Old, old Coldplay I like. Coldplay to me is like, you know. Like I'm OG Coldplay. Guilty pleasure. They're guilty pleasure band. Like, I have like, my guilty pleasure band is The Offspring. Really? Yeah. yeah. You listen I, to a lot of Offspring? I can name you six Offspring songs that I will rock dick to. What are they? <laughs> Come out and play, 100%. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, um, gotta get away Yeah, gotta get away. Me. Gotta get away. Uh, the Kids Aren't All Right. That song is yeah, that's a good fucking song. awesome. That's a good song. I'll tell you what. Smash is a great song. Please, just at no point say "Pretty Fly for a White Guy." I won't. The I, song I, is horrific. I hate all their gimmicky songs, but I like this. I like when they just do like, all, like the first two or three albums. I really like overall. They used to say the lead singer was like a Rhodes Scholar who just chose instead to be in this dumb band. I think he is like a very. All those guys were. They were all that Epitaph Records crew, which is where Bad Religion came from, because their guitar player started Epitaph. Mm-hmm. But Greg Graffin is like a biochemist. New, the, the guy Noodles in this, I, or no, sorry, Dexter, the singer in this band is like a science. He's something. like clones people. <laughs> He's I a think clone. Between albums, they are cloning people. Yeah, I they do what? science. Greg science. Greg, Greg Gra- Graffin teaches at fucking Utica. Who's Greg Graffin? Or Ithaca, the lead singer of Bad Religion. Oh, one of those two. It's either Ithaca or Utica, but he teaches there like when he's not on the road. Really? And he said it. Like, he he said once in an interview, he goes, it never mixes. None of my students are ever like, I love your... Ba-. Like, he's like, they don't cross over ever. What's he teach? Math? No, like hard... Just basic math? Like crazy, like... Look, we're way... We're, we, both of us are way too dumb for it. What is it? <laughs> he's put out books like about like fi- crazy astrophysics shit. Bring up his best formula. And I'll, just... <laughs> I'll just prove it. <laughs> bring, up yeah. his be- bring up his best work. You're not going to Matt Damon this thing. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. I, I try to me... buy... Go ahead and break this down for you real quick. I tried to buy the book out of support, and I was like, I don't know what the fuck, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we got to look at that. Uh, time's flying. 
I'm, I'm a big Liz Fair fan. I, I like Liz think, Fair. Loved her uh, for well, I loved her first three albums. Yeah, Liz yeah, Fair I went to cool. see her backstage at CBGB's before it closed. Oh really? Yeah. She met her. Yeah, I met was she her. Cool. She was really cool. That's if like I'm picking, if I'm picking girl rock, I'm going Heart every time. Heart's great. Uh, and then that's that might be where it stops. I'd see Joan Jett, but her face looks bizarre now. I can't look at it. She, she, it, she even, she. Thankfully, that thing with plastic surgery. Sometimes they even it out, like it settles in eventually, and then they kind of fix it. She's the. the, the, the I saw her recently in a documentary, which is great about her. Yeah, but I don't know how long. Called, uh, it's awesome, but she looked. She looked it's on good. Amazon, right? Yeah, yeah, she looked good again. Bad reputation. Yes. Um, great doc. Is she's it great? The, she's fucking awesome. Dude, she's... Well, that documentary, though, I think before where she's at now, I think she's gone the opposite way. I think she did more because uh, in, the, in the NFL, she now does... Uh, they've always used Carrie Underwood to sing the NFL Sunday night song. Joan Jett sings for the NFL now? No, no. Oh. So Carrie Underwood... Okay, sorry. ...has historically always sang, uh, used Joan Jett's song... I hate myself for loving you, but, oh, they, okay. but it's but it's the words are I've been waiting all day for Sunday night. Okay, and it's just she sings like a football song, but yeah. it's to the tune of that. This year they have Joan Jett in the video playing guitar. Okay, like for it, so it's like and they show her in that opening, and man, she looks weird. Again. She looks fucking bizarre. That sucks. Bring in the Sunday night that football uh, Carrie Underwood thing. She, like, uh, yeah, dude, look at her face. You gotta shut up. You gotta shut up. You said it with such disdain. You go look at her fucking face. Dude, look at her (laughs) fucking face. I thought a dog ate her face off or something. Carrie Underwood? Yeah. How does she look so great again? Maybe a dog didn't eat her face off. <laughs> Don't worry, she's coming up. She looks like fucking Richie Sambora. Yeah. Um. Eh, it might be. I don't know. No, dude. Because Carrie Underwood's got a weird filter over her face too. It might just be. It looks like they preserved Roy Orbson. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll tell you, I'll tell you why she's so awesome. Aside from the music and everything, she oh yeah, she does look weird. She's, she's the only one who kept. She's the only one who kept her mouth shut about that manager used to rape her. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, she's very, she's very hardcore feminist, but she's like real. She's like a real feminist. But you know, she's never so, ever no, I know. been behind that story. I know. She she won't do interviews. But I right. think I think she acknowledges that it happened. She's like, I don't want to do documentaries because she's about very it. much like I, you're not defining me by that. That's yeah. not who I am. What story? That's why I like that she's like she's like an old school feminist in the sense like she talks in the documentary about like when she first started out. She's like, yeah, man, I had a guy break a fucking bottle over my head, and she's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't want. Don't treat me special because I'm a girl. I'm here to fucking rock. I'm like, that's how, that's awesome. Like that's true feminism. And you know, lesbianism mostly, but yeah. Well, she won't talk about that either. But she is. She, she's, she's, she has a very plutonic. No, she is. My David, oh, for David real. Z, uh, okay. toured with her. Well, I didn't know you had inside info. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know you had a mole. Well, he's dead now. He's dead. David Z, yeah, from the Z Rock show that I was on. Look at the what the bass player. Yeah, what did he die from? The, horrible. Well, accident. Tell me the name of the band again. I feel like a piece of shit that I, I was trying to talk about this the other day and I can't remember. Al- not alkaline trio, maybe the band from Z Rock. Adrenal- Adrenal- Adrenaline Adrenal- mob. Adrenal Mob, no, no. So, oh, sorry. You I'm, know, Z Rock, yeah. the band Z Rock stopped performing together. So they the all, band was called Z Rock. No, Z O Two. Z O Two. That's right. Okay. And they were, uh, they just kind of went separate ways. Pauly moved out to L A. Uh, Joey's working for a bunch of different bands and doing stuff. And uh, Dave Z, super talented musician, and he would play with tra- Trans Siberian Orchestra every year. Oh, sure. So he was like a hired gun. One of his jobs was working with Joan Jett. Uh, Fired him unceremoniously while on the road for being too big on stage, like personality. Oh, really? Yeah, that sucks. She kept telling them they started. He said then one day they showed up and they put like uh, like uh, like speakers like around like in a box so basically, and they were like they were like and I said like she wants you to stand in here, and uh, so he just did that I guess and like but then he got like uh, fired, and they sent him home. But uh, yeah, that adrenaline they they were. If your tire is flat on the highway, I'll say it a thousand times, get the fuck off the highway. 
like off of it. Oh, that's how he died? Ride a rim to the fuck. He was on a tour bus, dude. And they pulled over to change a tire, and an 18 wheeler just wailed them. Oh, Jesus. Did anybody else die? No. Oh, maybe the driver. I think maybe the driver. That's like Cliff Burton shit, dude. The only one person I know, yeah. Yeah, that's fucking brutal. The luck of the draw. So the band was named after him? ZO2? Well, it was Z, the Z Brothers. Oh, uh, okay. And then uh, I forget what the other thing is. <laughs> that's that's crazy. I remember doing that show, I, and my scene was with Dave Navarro. We yeah. piled around with Dave Navarro for like four hours. Hell it was yeah. really nice. And then I saw him downstairs here once. Navarro? Yeah, we were signing in together. And I go, hey, man. And he's like, hey, what's up? And I was like, well, we were on Z-Rock together. And he's like, oh, yeah, what's up, dude? And like, we just talked for a minute. And, yeah, he, he was a nice guy. He, he did not funny. like me. He did not like me. He didn't? No, because it was improv script, so you know we just plug in our own jokes, right, on everything. And they they had scenes where they were like, "You gotta go make fun of like Dave Navarro or come in and like, oh. yeah, or, you know, basically, yeah." yeah. I mean, what's funny is like, ironically, what we're just talking about, the way he looked at the time, they go, "We were doing a scene where we were on a club, and we looked over, and and they see Dave Navarro who fucked him over the year before mm-hmm. with like the video shoot." And so they saw him again, and they were like, they didn't want to get his attention. And I was like, what's wrong, fellas? And they go, look over there. And I go, oh, man, Joan Jett. And he goes, it's Dave Navarro. I go, oh, man, Dave Navarro. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't like, he's like, Joan Jett, dude. Oh, like, that's funny. What do you want me to say, man? Like, that's so funny. When you first. Yeah, you have woman hair. When you first said he didn't like me because of the improv. My reaction was, he was very giving in my scenes, <laughs> but then you were like, I had my job was to just shit on him. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> Never a fan. <laughs> And uh, also, all, all, like you know, <laughs> and also, it's nothing. I I never hooked up with her at all, but uh, a girl, like the one girl on set, because they would line up girls for him, and he would go, uh, her and her. I mean, this is weird. Like they're my girlfriends for the day, and like they would just like be on either side of him like the whole day, like just walk. Nice. And <laughs> and one of the, and it's one of the girls he was hitting on. Just was like, it wasn't her thing. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. She wasn't like, overly impressed by. It. And I was just being funny. Me and her were like in a lot of things hanging out right. together. And I was just making her laugh with whatever shit. Like she would come to comedy shows and stuff. And like, I think he also just annoyed. Not that you think I took his chick. Right. I just think like, you know, whatever it was. Just like, I think I just got more attention yeah, from her yeah. in that moment. But yeah. I think cause she was, but it wasn't because she was into me at all. And she was that turned off by him. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he looks like the entire cast of what we do in the shadows. <laughs> yeah, he he would fit right in. They should put him on that fucking show. He looks like uh, what's the job of the people they tell you how to get chicks? Oh, the like fucking, a pickup artist. A pickup artist. He, he looks like a pickup artist. Yeah. <laughs> he really. Does. And like, look how look how good he looks when he doesn't like when he's just no, like Christine. Go down to the um down one more row. All the way to the right, where he's just got the glasses on. It's like well, I, <laughs> he just he always looks like looks fucking boring, like a, a man, like a male witch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fuck is he? He does. He looks like a Sasha Bar and Cohen character. He's like a, he's a warlock. He's like Zorro the Gay Blade. <laughs> Stop it, Dave! Cut it out, Dave. He Dude, he's got a checkerboard inside of his head, like Cindy Lauper in '85. Oh, there Gender he is. Bending. Oh. Hell yeah, My dick, dude! It's like rock hard right now. <laughs> it's rock hard. <laughs> what well, is that from? What Corey? Yeah, dro- okay. What What does that drop from? His, his audio book. He's trying to inform me of the time when Corey Haim was like, uh, hey, why don't we just, he pulls his dick out and goes, why don't we just fuck around, dude? It's not gay. Why don't we just mess around, man? I mean, like, we're both right here. Why don't we just touch each other or something? Do you have, like, it's just what guys do? Dude, he is fucking douching him since No, man, I'm not gay, okay? This is just what guys do. (laughs) Such an asshole. (laughs) Haim had turned into quite a mess. And then what happened? Haim allowed himself to be sodomized. <laughs> oh, I never heard those. He read his, his audiobooks eight hours, and he read it all himself. That's it. amazing. He reads the whole Jacob thing. Jacob did an intense study on it's it. It's great. I'm you downloading should. that tonight. I got audible credits, bitch. <laughs> yeah, dude. Chore- choreography. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm downloading that shit. What, the, what was the first line of it? The first sentence of the whole thing was great. The immediate, it's all about Corey Hames. Oh, no, you're forgetting the other one. He goes, uh... He goes, my aunt, I remember I was a little boy and my aunt came in the room and she was like, get ready, Corey. You're doing, you're filming your first commercial today. My he, first commercial? <laughs> 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 
It was the most surreal conversation of my life. <laughs> and I start on a show called The Surreal Life. Oh, oh my All the hits. God, I'm going to uppercut this fucking microphone. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, that got me mad. Let's take a quick break. You can shadow box. <laughs> and we'll be right back. We're hanging out with Joe DeRosa. It's the bonfire. Hey, why do 97% of customers surveyed say they sleep better on Bowling Branch sheets? Is it the 100% organic cotton? Is it that they get softer and softer over time? You know what? You're just going to have to find out for yourself why Bowling Branch sheets are the most comfortable sheets in the world. They're loved by hundreds of thousands of Americans, including three U.S. presidents. These are $1,000 sheets for just a couple hundred bucks. And for a limited time, you can get their luxury flannel bedding. Perfect for cool weather. They keep cool sleepers warm, and they breathe so warm sleepers stay cool. Bowling Branch flannel sheets come in 16 stunning patterns and colors. You're guaranteed to find a style you love. You get 30 nights to try them out. I fixed it myself. Jacob. No, it was fixed. No. You get uh, one 30 one. nights. They told me they were going to... I'm sorry. They don't respect I you, dude. It. You get 30 nights to try them out. Shipping is always free, and right now you're going to get $50 off your first set of sheets at bowlandbranch.com with promo code BONFIRE. Spelled B-O-L-L and branch.com, promo code BONFIRE. Bowlandbranch.com, promo code BONFIRE. Hiring can be challenging. But ZipRecruiter makes it fast and easy. We talked to COO Dylan Miskowitz, who needed to hire a director of coffee for his company, Cafe Altura. We would look through lots of applications for people who were not qualified. It definitely felt like we were looking for a needle in a haystack. So Dylan started using ZipRecruiter and found his perfect candidate in a few days. ZipRecruiter's powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. We were very impressed with how quickly we had quality candidates apply through ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter is a powerful tool in our hiring process. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. Quip, makers of the Quip electric toothbrush want you to know the one single discovery that matters most for your dental care. It is simply this, that if you have good habits, you are good. That means brushing for two minutes twice a day and flossing regularly, no matter what brand you use. Quip makes that simple, starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste. Quip's electric brush has sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer and 30-second pulses to guide a full and even clean. Their floss dispenser comes with a pre-marked string to help you use just enough. Plus, Quip delivers fresh brush head floss and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping. So your routine is always right. Join over 3 million healthy mouths and get Quip today, starting at $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash bonfire, right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash bonfire. Quip, the good habits company. Getquip.com slash bonfire. Your beard is how you distinguish yourself. And using Cremo beard products is how you distinguish your beard. From beard wash and scruff cream to revitalizing oils and styling balm, each is designed to soothe, soften, and relieve the itch for any stage of beard growth. So whether it's short and scruffy or long and glorious, your beard will always look and feel its best. Cremo Beard Products. Beard boldly at Walmart, Target, CVS Pharmacy, Rite Aid, Walgreens, and on Amazon. Tune in all No Shave November long as hosts from Mad Dog Sports Radio, Sirius XM NFL Radio, Sirius XM FC, and ESPNU Radio raise awareness for men's health by going razor free and competing in our third Best Beard Challenge. Our 2019 Best Beard Challenge is presented by Cremo Barber Grade Beard Products, which answer the unique requirements of beards, no matter the length. From beard wash and scruff cream to revitalizing oils and styling balm, each is designed to soothe, soften, and relieve the itch. Treat your beard to the Cremo Barber Grade experience and always beard boldly. You know there's nobody on the planet like you, so why would you buy a generic mattress built for everyone else? Helix Sleep built a sleep quiz that takes two minutes to complete, and they use the answers to match your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress. Whether you're a side sleeper, hot sleeper, like a plush or firm bed with Helix, there's no more guessing and no more compromising on an average mattress. 
Go to helixsleep.com slash bonfire, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix Sleep was even awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2019 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Uh, Christine just uh, felt it at my daughter's house. We're still talking there. about the mattress, right? Yeah. Folks. Hey, <laughs> folks. <laughs> she, uh... She got to uh, lay on it. Yeah, they said it was amazing. That's an amazing mattress. Yeah, it's really it's, it's what else was it? GQ already talked about it. Wired talked about it. I covered that. They have a ten year warranty. That's where we were. And you get to try your mattress out for a hundred nights risk free. Do you know how many things you can quote unquote spill on that mattress in a hundred nights? Free. Risk-free. You can send it right back. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it. But you're going to love it. Right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders. Get up to $200 off at helixsleep.com slash bonfire. Once again, that's helixsleep.com slash bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Fire mega vaulted. <laughs> <laughs> and now she had the strength to survive it. <laughs> well, get your hands out of my panties. Did you see the, uh... Get your hands out of my panty. Did you see the, uh... You're supposed to be my mom's brother. You're supposed to be my mother's brother. It's not, that sounds like Blink-182 singing about molestation. <laughs> my That's mom's Christine, brother. Christine loves Blink-182. That's her guilty play, but she's not even guilty about it, this dumb idiot. She's not even all excited. And that's when I met her at a mall. Ugh, yeah, they can suck them. my chode. Yeah. Skateboard <laughs> through a skate park. Mm -hmm. I saw a girl walking a dog. She had a skirt. I brought yeah. my shoes. What is wrong with me yeah. for asking her out? <laughs> Shut up, you I'm so lame. <laughs> She's so hot. That's perfect young girl music. Is this if they were 40? Is this GC again or is this Blink-182? Blink. Dude, so oh. sang this a comedy jam. Oh, this is the one he sang a comedy jam. Yeah. This song is ass. ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just wanted him to sing so bad that I supported whatever he wanted to sing. But this was an awful choice. He regretted it immediately. <laughs> and then hate it. He walked on that stage and he goes, I'll never be talked into doing comedy jam ever again. I hate it. So like, was, I don't like doing it. He was banking everything on it. how funny is it going to be when I come in with the high part. That was the entire decision was based on that, and nobody the gave crowd a didn't shit get it about any of us. Nobody cared about any of us when we were putting our all into it. In the middle, in the middle, in the middle of my in the middle of my two song medley, I go. Uh, we ended the one song. Uh, just don't get it. Keep yeah. it going. I go, dan, 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 dan. And I go to Josh. I go, should we just even not do the second one? I go, bam, bam, bam. And I start playing it. I'm like, I was looking at Josh. And Josh is looking. We were doing this on stage. Like, he's like, I don't know. Dude, just like sing it, I guess. I'm like, this crowd fucking hates it. Uh, man, that was, a, that was a rough ride, that one. When Soder did it, who did the whiny part? He did. He did. He, J Josh Adamires did the other part. Oh, no, no, part. Jeremiah. Oh, Jeremiah. This part. Yeah. Is Soder. Soder thought A, the crowd was going to be familiar with this tune, and B, they were going to go nuts when he came in with the whiny part, and neither were true. Literally, if Joe, Ga if Joe Gatto walked out and gave a thumbs up, they would have thrown fucking bras at the stage. They were so excited to see the Jokers, they yeah. were not interested in anything else going on. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was a Jokers, it was a Jokers um, uh, centric comedy jam. So it was Joker's fans, and if those Jokers were now, yeah, I mean, you know, if, if, all you had to do was have Q just sitting on the edge of that stage, you would have killed. Fenoy, <laughs> Fenoy was brilliant. Fenoy was brilliant. He just goes, I'm going to do running, da running Down a Dream with Q. Yeah. <laughs> so they were fucking, they were marching for Fenoya, and then the rest of us went out there and ate a I've dog never, dick, dude. I bought my comedy bomb so hard, I've never worked a song so hard in my fucking life, dude. <laughs> you did, you, I you jumped were, off the stage. He was down stage. in the audience, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't get back on the stage. I couldn't climb back up. <laughs> Without looking, that's why I never jump off a stage if I get back up. I said, it's fat kid getting out of a pool. I got to put my leg up and like roll <laughs> yeah, onto it. So do I. And I go, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me. <laughs> Jeremiah leaned down on all fours and was like, step on my back. And I was like, I, that's gonna make me feel too bad about myself that you have a strong enough body that I that you can be a stool for me and I can't do this on my own. Like, I was like, forget You're it. A little help here? Yeah. yeah I was like, I, I'm I'm with the audience now. Yeah, dude. I had to, I had to like go out through the exit and come back through the front of the building and come back around <laughs> with a corded microphone just going everywhere with you. It's a lot of slack. Holy yeah, we shit. really hate shit. But yeah, Christine likes Christine was seeing Blink One Eighty Two by herself. 
But you went solo to Blink. I did. That is fucking bold. They were playing. I didn't think I was going to see them all perform together. And it was like right after. I actually thought it was 2008, but it looks like it was 2009. They were at Madison Square Garden and Fall Out Boy opened for them. And I got oh like a Lord. pit ticket and just went by myself. I got hammered. It was the first time I'd ever <laughs> right. got. I like drank a 40 and then was at MSG like a 40 deep drinking more beer. But <laughs> it was fun. I, I mean, I really like. Their music's so nostalgic to me. Like, it really was like the soundtrack to being a 15 year old. I haven't done it many times, but I've been to concerts. I went to see a 40 I saw, beer. Yeah, I saw Bad I'm Religion alone. Well, you know oh, you're not, I saw, not ladylike. I saw I Bad, Bad Religion alone in Austin, and I yeah. saw Karis One alone in Austin. I just saw Ian DeFranco alone because I'm like, I don't know who to invite to this that wouldn't just like call it gay. And by alone, you mean you were the only person at the entire show? No. She stinks. It was me and a I bunch know. of other women. I know. Oscar Sting comes up, she goes, You know what's great? When she was like, I have a lot of hope for the world and blah, blah, blah. Oh, my Christ. I said it was it's, nice it was to hear a feminist when say si- that she was hopeful and not just angry. When I'm System of a Down of being angry about When everything. System of a Down would go on stage and, and in between songs be like, the government is starting false wars. Oh, I'm like, I hope a fucking bus drives through the stage. <laughs> and, I mean, just well, sing the I fucking like song. I don't care. folk singer and storyteller, <laughs> and she, I love her shows, and I love her banter and chat. I had a, I had a, I had a Tool joke. Said, Tool said, uh, Maynard James Keenan last night said one thing on the microphone. Thank you, Brooklyn. I had a... I had, only words he said. I had a joke and it never, it never fucking worked about, I think it was about going to see Bob Dylan. And I was like, oh, it's like going to church. I'm like, the music sucks. <laughs> and then he's just <laughs> preaching at you in between everything. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. This blows, dude. <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, Dave Smith's wife, Lauren, Said she went to see Stevie Nicks like solo. Oh, but it was like a different kind of thing. It was like she sang no song you want to hear and just told stories you don't give a shit about. And then heard from somebody that she makes up the stories, dude. Like, things like didn't happen, right? Jesus Christ! <laughs> like the next day would be a different story. I t- I'll tell you this: I saw at Bonnaroo, I saw Radiohead with Pete Holmes. We were escorted in, you know, like Rocky, the producer. Mm-hmm. She would she took us in, and for some reason it was just me and Pete. Like nobody else came with us. And she took us to this very special area. We were like at our own like little gated off area. We had an open bar right next. This is best case scenario. I was so excited. Everybody was smoking weed. I, by, I, by the end of the show, I was ready to fucking throw a goddamn rock <laughs> at fucking, what's Cross-Eyed's name? In Tom York. F- Tom York. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this fucking, ha- the, he, fa- he faced the wall for half of the stage. And you had to look at his face through a monitor. And then they just did... They did not, dude. I'm telling you, they went deep cuts only. It was a lot of that drum machine shit that they did. I was was fucking furious. I was fucking furious, man. They didn't play anything off the bends. They closed with Paranoid Android. That was the only fucking thing they did. I'll tell you what, that would have got me excited, though. No, that, yeah. That's it, though. But that's a long wait, dude. Uh, it's a long wait. That's I, a long wait of like a radio, lot of. I've never been tempted to even see go see Radiohead. A lot of drum loops with him going. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like Jesus Christ. You uh, couldn't get drunk enough to make it fun. Fucking wonk eye British idiot. <laughs> it's fucking little boy hair. Yeah. Fuck Tom York. And because he's facing away from you, and and you can only see him on the screen. You got to look at that fucking goofy eye, <laughs> three stories high. <laughs> Yeah. Why does he look like that? He's got a fucking meth addict face. That fucking wonk eye. So what are you, a bag man for the Irish mafia? <laughs> Bring up Tom does. York's fucking goof eye. He does. Tom York has Guy Ritchie character face. <laughs> is that what you say he did, dude? Oh. God. Holy shit. It looks like Frank Vignola. It's <laughs> a local comic here. The Vignons. The Vignons. Oh, he's gotten so much older, man. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. Really weird. I'm picturing that. Yeah. It wasn't... It, it, it got worse as it got... I, I was thought it was from an accident, but it, it seems to have worsened. Maybe it's a condition. I don't know what it is, but he doesn't really... We have a weird eye. Me eye that gets fat, and I can't <laughs> hold it up anymore, I can't. <laughs> uh... <laughs> he looked better with little boy hair, actually. Yeah, he wasn't a bad looking dude. Except for that fucking that. Uh, it's it, yeah. Now go down, to, go down, bottom rope. To, go to down, fix it. up, up, over. Oh yeah, that's right. Yes, that, that's right a here. drawing. That's like, yeah. He looks like he does like homemade porn. 
Right there, it doesn't look that bad, right? Now, I'm in, we don't have any male weird. talent here, so I'll, if you don't mind, <laughs> I'm just going to give you a tryout myself. I'm going to pull out my bird, and you're going to suck on it a little bit, and we'll see if you got what it takes to make it. <laughs> uh, the band's like, Tom, can you please put the eye patch on tonight? Uh, no? All right, fine. Well, well, can you at least face the fucking wall the whole time then so no one's going to look at your fucking goof eye? <laughs> yeah, but then he turns it on the wall, then it goes from the monitor, and they go, ah, turn back around. <laughs> you know, his only goof Hey, can you wear this Phantom of the Opera mask? <laughs> Turns out he was born with a paralyzed left eye. Good for him. Okay. He went under five eye operations by age six. Because his mom was drunk. <laughs> his mom was an alcoholic. <laughs> That's why all these songs are fucking sad, mopey songs. I like this song. They didn't play this one. <laughs> <laughs> they skipped this one. They fucking gleamed just right over Karma Police, just skipped right over it. <laughs> if I go, if I didn't hear, here's the thing. I'd be okay to not hear Creep, although I feel like at the end of the show, I would have rather heard that than some of the other things. I, I, I mean, was fine not hearing Creep. Four, four songs that I would be super into, if they didn't play even one of them, I'd be furious. They didn't play Black Star? I don't know that oh. one. You know fucking Black Star. Do I? Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the best. They didn't Maybe. play, the, I don't think they played the Benz. My favorite is Paranoid it. Android. Yeah. Uh, high and Dry, Paranoid Android, Karma Police. Yeah. And, uh,. Maybe it's black. I don't think you got any of that, dude. I'm talking. No, I'm sure. They well, were, Paranoid Android, you said. They Maybe were sure. fucking, uh, you know, like king of limbs forward. Oh, uh, what's the uh, music for a movie exit or what it's called? Exit music for a yeah. film. Exit music for a oh, film. Oh, you know what they did play that was cool? They played um, Everything in Its Right Place. That was good. You know that song. If I hear it. It's the first song, Kid A. Do, no, 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 no. The ones, it's all organ. Everything in this right play this song. Sasha Blue. Sasha Blue. Oh, I like this song. Sasha Blue. 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 Dude, what did Adam Sandler, Adam Sandler write your lyrics? <laughs> That's why Adam Sandler stopped doing stand-up. Radio had got too big. He's like, eh, I was doing it first. Get all that publishing money, so. <laughs> you bring a new song in, you're the guitar player, you're like, Tom, I got a new song. Can you not sing this one like a weekend update segment, please? No? All right, I'll fuck off. Go ahead, Tom. I love to sing this new album as Opera Man, I do, I does. <laughs> you know the song, right? No. No? No. I, is, is exit music from a, for a film, is that a... I might not be the right song I'm thinking. No, that's... That's from that guy, Romeo and Juliet. Is that, is I think that's the last song on um, OK Computer, right? Or is it the last? No. Or is it on the Benz? I don't know. I can't get. I can't, I can't fucking remember anything anymore. I feel like this isn't a song that you would be into. The exit music for a film. Yeah, it's not it. It's not the song I'm thinking of. Play Black Star really quick. I want to see if you know it. This All song the songs by awesome. them I like are slow though, from except Paranoid yeah. Android. Yeah, that's why I never, I was never into Creed. I got into them. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking great song. Great album. Yeah. Arguably the best album. Yeah, it's my favorite. Yeah. Arguably their best. Jacob didn't know he liked Tool till yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> now he's all in. Neither did Joe. I oh, liked Joe? them. I just thought you I hated them now. I thought I grew into hating them. And now I'm like, nah, I like them again. I was wrong. Did they play any of the old stuff? Yeah. About our theme songs, Sober and... Uh, no theme songs, like Ticks and Leeches. No, they no. didn't play either of them. They did whip out something from Opiate, though. Oh, they played yeah. that one track from Opiate because they were uh, like... Invincible, you, right? You guys weren't even alive or whatever. Because remember, he was like, who, was, who here is under 30? Yeah, I think it's Invincible, maybe, that was? I, yeah, I can't remember. But I was like, oh, that's cool. They went like... They, they dug into a, to a deeper one. Or it's a... Uh, <clears throat> chocolate Chip Trip, maybe? That probably sounds like something from Opiate. Um, I will say this. They they also have the Motorhead syndrome of 
it, there's a lot of similarity in the songs. There, there were like four songs before Schism where I was like ready to go, I know the pieces. I swear, yeah. I was like, oh, this isn't it. Particularly, <laughs> Jacob, to give a little insight what happened, at one point I leaned over to Jacob and I go, dude, you definitely know this one. <laughs> and then it never turned into Schism. And, I, and by the middle of the song, I was like, I, I, don't, I don't think this is Schism. I, go, I thought maybe they were doing a wacky intro for it. And I was like, I don't... You know what? I don't think this is the song. Because then when Schism the came on, you didn't know you that went, song. This is the one I meant. Yeah, yeah, I meant this one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, do they not hear that that's a song has the same exact melody? They're just, you know, it's one of those things. That was all, that was my favorite. When that dro- when that bass line dropped in, that was my favorite part in the concert. Because it, it, it's I get excited seeing how excited the crowd gets. Buddy, so when me, that landed, it was like, that, 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 that excitement just got me excited. For you guys me, found it to be too loud? Um... Murkface Andy said he had to put in earplugs, and I think Jacob did too. No, I had him in the whole time. Yeah, no, I, I didn't. made my Andy own. Andy was in pain. Yeah, yeah, I balled up paper. I had to. It was fucking really loud. But I mean, you, you were it was because we were so close. Yeah, I just yeah. Lived I probably should have had. I should have had headphones. In. Yeah, but I just live it, and I have terrible ears currently as we speak. Real ear problems, but gotta go live it, man. What's, <laughs> I gotta go blow out those. What's going on? My, my hearing's getting shitty too. What's going on with yours? <laughs> I have. Uh, a very thin eustachian tube that connects your sinuses to your ears Mm -hmm. and so if it's like cold season or anything like it's just very easy for it to get inflamed and just close down so if it's my ears like I feel like I'm talking in my own head a lot okay which sucks but you're not like losing your hearing it weirdly it doesn't seem to affect my hearing as far as like I seem to be able to hear and comprehend as much as I did I don't think I'm I can't hear somebody where I used to be able to but it's just like it's like having like your hand like cupped over your ear oh that sucks yeah my hearing is just getting worse if i'm in a, if i'm in a situation where there's competitive noise i can't hear what you're saying yeah like if i'm in a bar and the, and the, there's music the stand a lot of the time in the restaurant and it's not like it's cranking in there it's just like i can't I'll, like I, when i'm trying to talk to comics at the table i have to keep leaning in like that's what sucks. betsy's trying to say that it's distracting when you're trying to do things oh well, yeah all right yeah. but i mean when you're alone music is nice but i listen to podcasts I hate listening to. I can't. You couldn't. You couldn't. With a gun to my head, I wouldn't listen. I to do Howard podcast. Stern always daytime in the car, and then nighttime music, straight music. I wonder, Becky, does that have to do with growing? Because you grew up singing. Yeah. Right. So is it just kind of like music was kind of work for you? Well, I still sing. Like I'll sing to the songs. Also, Canada has no music. So Nickelback, <laughs> oh, Avril yeah. Lavigne. Yeah, that's, that's the trade-off it. for healthcare, right? <laughs> we can't afford music. A. <laughs> hey. <laughs> can't afford music, eh? Hey? You guys got you guys got your choice: hockey, music, healthcare. Pick two, and pick. And make sure you pick the ones you want. Did you arbitrarily like like Celine Dion and people like that? Brian Adams, all the Canadian things you have to love. I guess because it's like pop music and it's on the radio so much, you just you eventually Stockholm syndrome yourself into it don't you say that about brian adams <laughs> he's, he's right. perfect he's great he's got a couple of great ballads i just saw brian adams in concert and he was great you told me about it in great detail more than i ever wanted to hear about a brian adams concert. <laughs> <laughs> you told me in great detail and i was like i guess it was i had you had to be there i, I, I feel like if i was there i might have been there with you but without it's being already there, stripped down, it was just yeah. like he just sounds exactly the same. I'm like, what yeah. great detail! <laughs> oh, he went through the whole set list. Well, Jay was probably. like, and then he fucking, and then he did summer '69. And just when you think it's over, <laughs> he comes back with cuts like a knife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You 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 got into like somebody what he with. run to you. <laughs> yeah. That's one of those shows. I feel like if I saw it, I'd I'd be excited. Because because it's you know it's classic '80s shit, but I, I don't know that I would ever go Billy out of my Idol, way to Billy go. Idol just sucked. See, Idol was great when I saw him, but I saw him a while ago, and he so was Elton not. John. And you said when you saw oh, him, it wasn't good. Garbage. I saw them at the same festival. So boring. Um, we gotta take our second break. Joe DeRosa. Christine. Sorry. <laughs> Joe DeRosa. He has a new album. I go to Atlanta all the time. I knew that one. It's available now wherever you download well, from. Well, it's it, for purchase only. It's not streaming. Yeah, yeah. It's not, not streaming, just Not for Spotify, purchase. yeah. Only purchase, yeah. Very, very cool. So uh, iTunes. Yeah. Uh, and of the sort, uh, Joe DeRosa also is going to be at Soul Joel's Comedy Club in Royersford, PA. That's over the Thanksgiving weekend, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Yeah. Uh, that's November 27th through Saturday, November 30th. No show on Thanksgiving. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> uh, for tickets and all other tour dates, go to Joe DeRosa Info. 
Facebook.com. It's Joe DeRosa Info. Dot com. Hey, uh, this Friday and Saturday, Mike Fenoy and I will be at, in Syracuse at the Funny Bone. Uh, that's this Friday and Saturday. And then Laugh Boston, my birthday weekend, December 5th to the 7th. We're going to have the after work jam. I got to do like black comedy birthday shows. What do you black mean? Black comedy always went a little better with the birthday shows. Like a talent birthday show was a fucking blowout. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, dude, the flyers alone. Oh, just glo- high gloss. Yeah. The flyers alone, just pulling out all the fucking stops. It was always, it was always the pictures of the three comics like up in the sky. Yeah, and also, and also like wearing suits. Like that yeah. one time they wore suits. So. Yeah, and they would have a logo. Yeah, did we get a logo design just for the fucking birthday? Several event? sponsors on uh, plugged on that thing. Black people go out. Willie D from the Ghetto Boys just posted an Instagram invite to his birthday. Yeah, and he was like, "Look, it's my fiftieth. Uh, I'm gonna be at this place for the party." The whole goddamn city is, in, or the whole damn city is invited, and he goes first ten grand at the bar is on me. I was like, really? these fucking guys know how to throw parties, yeah. dude. Like, god damn, that's awesome. Yeah, like, yeah. hose drink free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did this in, I did this at the comedy jam in Houston. People nice. were going fucking crazy. Oh, uh, that's great. Good they choice, were going dude. crazy, dude. Yeah, and then we went into Damn It Feels Good to Be a Gangster. People were going crazy. Uh, I, I'd say it was awesome. I'd say you throw a repeat on that. God damn right I will. At, uh, and then Skankfest. Uh, one of the nights, the other night, I'm getting up there with you. And, yeah, oh buddy. shit! We're not supposed to talk. fuck. Sorry, wasn't announced yet. Fuck so what? <laughs> <laughs> Gives a shit. I, 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 I mentioned that I might be rolling through, and Lewis almost karate chopped my throat. <laughs> Lewis would have said that if you asked him to pass you the salt, dude. He's a fucking wing nut. He's off his rocker. He's unstable and chemically wrong. Do not let that affect the way you conduct yourself. That's fair. Um, Let's take our uh, second break here. We'll be right back. We're hanging out with Joe DeRosa. Fucked up when your mind is playing tricks on the bonfire. What's the fastest way to the bathroom? Ooh, good question. <laughs> Why do 97% of customers surveyed say they sleep better on bowl and branch sheets? Is it the 100% organic cotton? Is that they get softer and softer over time? You just have to feel for yourself why Bowling Branch sheets are the most comfortable sheets in the world. They're loved by hundreds of thousands of Americans, including three U.S. presidents. These are $1,000 sheets for just a couple hundred bucks. And for a limited time, you can get their luxury flannel bedding, perfect for cool weather. They keep cool sleepers warm, and they breathe so warm sleepers stay cool. Bowling Branch flannel sheets come in 16 stunning patterns and colors. You're guaranteed to find a style you love. You get 30 nights... I was looking at Jacob. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. 30 nights to try them out. Shipping is always free, and right now you'll get $50 off your first set of sheets at bowlandbranch.com with promo code BONFIRE. Spelled B-O-L-L and branch.com, promo code BONFIRE. Bowlandbranch.com, promo code BONFIRE. Why do 97% of customers surveyed say they sleep better on bowl and branch sheets? Is it the 100% organic cotton? Is it that they get softer and softer over time? You just have to feel for yourself why bowl and branch sheets are the most comfortable sheets in the world. They're loved by hundreds of thousands of Americans, including three U.S. presidents. These are $1,000 sheets for just a couple hundred bucks. And for a limited time, you can get their luxury flannel bedding. Perfect for cool weather. They keep cool sleepers warm, and they breathe so warm sleepers stay cool. Why do 90 97% of customers surveyed say they sleep better on bowl and branch sheets. You just have to feel for yourself why bowl and branch sheets are the most comfortable sheets in the world. Bowl and branch flannel sheets come in 16 stunning patterns. You're guaranteed to find a style you love. You get 30 nights to try them out. Shipping is always free. And right now, you'll get $50 off your first set of sheets at bowlandbranch.com with promo code BONFIRE. Spelled B O L L and branch.com, promo code BONFIRE. Bowlandbranch.com, promo code BONFIRE. Hiring can be challenging, but ZipRecruiter makes it fast and easy. We talked to COO Dylan Miskowitz, who needed to hire a director of coffee for his company, Cafe Altura. We would look through lots of applications for people who were not qualified. It definitely felt like we were looking for a needle in a haystack. So Dylan started using ZipRecruiter and found his perfect candidate in a few days. ZipRecruiter's powerful technology identifies people with the right experience and actively invites them to apply which is why you should try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. 
We were very impressed with how quickly we had quality candidates apply through ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter is a powerful tool in our hiring process. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And now you can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free at ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. ZipRecruiter.com slash comedy. When you're selling online, getting your orders out could be a real pain, especially during the holiday rush. That's when you need ShipStation.com. It's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. You can be sure your shipments are delivered in time for the holidays. ShipStation helps you get your orders out quickly, save money on shipping costs, and keep your customers happy. ShipStation brings all your orders into one simple interface, making them really easy to manage from any device. Even your cell phone. ShipStation will recommend the best shipping carrier for each order at the lowest rates available. You can compare rates across all the top carriers, including UPS, FedEx, and USPS, and always know that you're getting the best deal. ShipStation is the number one choice of online sellers. Take the hassle out of holiday shopping this year. Right now, try ShipStation free for 60 days by using offer code COMEDY. There's no credit card required to try it out, so why wait? Go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in comedy that's shipstation.com and her comedy ship station makes ship happen hey jeff lewis here on my show you'll hear me get into trouble overshare about my personal life and so much more and now with sirius xm video you get to see the best moments too i already had two meetings at hr and they gave me this list of things that i'm not supposed to do apparently there is a second hr complaint against me and this show my boss is on the line i think we should take it real quick uh -oh. let's do it it's like your backstage pass to jeff lewis live download the app or go online to see what you've been hearing with Sirius XM video. To learn more, go to SiriusXM.com slash more. For years, you've been thinking about LASIK. You've been talking about LASIK. So now, it's finally time to get LASIK. Right now, LASIK Plus is offering LASIK, starting at just $250 per eye. If you're nearsighted, farsighted, or even if you have an astigmatism, LASIK Plus can help fix your vision, starting at just $250 per eye. Our best price ever. So get rid of the daily hassles of contacts and glasses and enjoy the newfound freedom of LASIK from LASIK Plus. Call 844-343-2020 or visit LASIK250.com today and schedule your free LASIK exam. The LASIK Plus doctors are among the area's most experienced LASIK surgeons. So take advantage of this amazing LASIK Plus price today. Call 844-343-2020 or visit LASIK250.com. Results may vary. Restrictions apply. See details at LASIK250.com. You're in charge of hiring, and Indeed has solutions, like online skills tests, which let a candidate show that they're the right hire. We'll also have a dolphin chatter excitedly in front of the perfect candidate. Okay, there's no dolphin. But skills tests, that's a for sure. See why independent research by Silk Road shows Indeed delivers three times more hires than any other job site. Visit Indeed.com slash promo today and get a free sponsored job upgrade on your first posting. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Guess what? Right now is the perfect time to get your house ready for the winter so you can sit back and enjoy the holidays. HomeAdvisor can help get you started. HomeAdvisor matches you to the right pro for the job in seconds. You can read reviews and even book appointments online. HomeAdvisor can help with any home project, big or small, painting, plumbing, even remodeling. So why wait? Go to HomeAdvisor.com or download the free app to get started on your next project. HomeAdvisor. Quip, makers of the Quip electric toothbrush want you to know the one single discovery that matters most for your dental care. It is simply this, that if you have good habits, you are good. That means brushing for two minutes twice a day and flossing regularly, no matter what brand you use. Quip makes that simple, starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste. Quip's electric brush has sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer and 30-second pulses to guide a full and even clean. Their floss dispenser comes with a pre-marked string to help you use just enough. Plus, Quip delivers fresh brush head floss and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping. So your routine is always right. Join over 3 million healthy mouths and get Quip today, starting at $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash bonfire, right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip com slash bonfire. Quip, the good habits company. Getquip.com slash bonfire. 
Oh, sooky sooky now. Hey, when you're selling online, getting your orders out can be a real pain in the patoot, especially during the holiday rush. That's why you need ShipStation.com. It's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. You can be sure your shipments are delivered in time for the holidays. ShipStation helps you get your orders out quickly, save money on shipping costs, and keep your customers happy. ShipStation brings all your orders into one simple interface, making them really easy to manage from any device, even your cell phone. ShipStation will recommend the best shipping carrier for each order at the lowest rates available. You can compare rates across all the top carriers, including UPS, FedEx, and USPS, and you'll always know that you're getting the best deal. ShipStation is the number one choice of online sellers. Take the hassle out of holiday shopping this year, and right now, try ShipStation free for 60 days by using offer code COMEDY. There's no credit card required to try it out, so why wait? Becky, did you wait? Did you jump on? You still haven't done it yet. Yeah. Come on. What are you doing? You're running merch stuff. I know. But the post lady is sometimes nice to me. <laughs> Brian Adams is just okay, she says. She says, she, no, says. she says. She says that, she says. <laughs> Next thing I know, she says she's waiting on ship station. <laughs> well, in fairness, ship station, you wrote down to ask, why wait? And she gave an answer. I just <laughs> did. And I like the lady at the post office. <laughs> I don't know how to argue with that. Uh, well, if you're not like Becky, you could try it free for 60 days using offer code COMEDY. She hates free stuff, and she likes a lady sometimes at the post office. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You don't need a credit card at all to try it out. Go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in COMEDY. That's ShipStation.com, enter COMEDY. ShipStation, make ship happen. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Look at it with Joe. Uh, it's a World Star video? It's a World Star video. How I missed it is mind blown to me. I diligently check World Star every day. This one got gotta, right past me somehow. I gotta start. I gotta. I need a new site to look up fun shit. Maybe I'll start looking at World Star. It's World Star. That's the one. Does it get right, the- Black Lou, pretty much? It's like, it, it's all the viral shit. Yes. It's all of it. Does it get depressing, though? Is it like bum fights and shit like that? For black people. Sometimes oh. it's bum fights. So, yeah. But more than bum fights, it's like, not bum, but more like, you know, drunk idiot gets knocked out by a bouncer, or bouncer oh. gets drunk, knocked out by a drunk idiot, okay. you know what I mean? I but more that. than that, it's also just like, cra- like it, what's great about World Star Hip Hop is that the, the description is very um, in the vernacular of hip hop. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? So it'll be like, he goes, she ratchet as shit. What kind of shit this bitch on? Uh-huh. Ruth Bader Ginsburg speaks to Congress. You know, it's like, what? It's like, oh, right. this bitch on some ratchet shit. <laughs> Judge Judy Shineland speaks on Bill Maher's show. <laughs> yeah, see, it was like, this is the thing that Blue brought. Where was this seminar? Where was this seminar? They out here rolling around in lube <laughs> while dude tries his best to give a presentation. Like, yeah, that's a great way to describe this. That chick's making me H. Yeah? Yeah. She's rodding you up a little bit? It's <laughs> yeah. nice. Yeah, I like it. So what is this now? This is a... Uh, what's the seminar for Sexual Health Expo? Are they a couple? I don't believe they're a no. I think they're just... They're, they're just part of the thing. expo. Yeah. Yeah, I go to all this stuff. By the way, if I had a fucking banging dick and just a killer body, <laughs> I'd be all over shit like this. Yeah? Anywhere. I don't understand. Justin's been offered pornography 17 times since I've known him. He's like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm like, dude, go be a stunt cock, man. Yeah, yeah. Use that pig. What do you have it for then? <laughs> Just dude butts? <laughs> it's too big for most, I'd say. <laughs> Looks like Katherine Heigl getting rubbed down by Michael Jai White. Yeah. I wish anybody got either of those references. I got him. Thank you. I got you, boo. <laughs> Her ass is unreal. <sighs> so... Slipping and sliding on each other, and I don't know if you guys want to. So wait, pause it so I can explain what's going on. There's a super hot girl in a very small bikini and a muscular black guy laying on a mat that is covered in lube, mm-hmm. right? Lube, yes, it's lube. That's your lube. And uh, yeah, so yeah, and then a boxing announcer. Yeah, is, and then is it a Mike tux? Goldberg. <laughs> Is it a fucking tux? Yeah, Mike Buffer comes in. Yeah, why do you need a tux for this? Look at this dork, too. These two cool, beautiful people in the man. Yeah. Look at this Now, fucking... now if you'll notice, his, his penis was rubbing against her thigh. That's nice. <laughs> I hear girls like that. Um, <laughs> It really is. So, And he's saying, like, this is just like a pleasurable thing to rub around Hell yeah. and lube on the floor. 
Go ahead. How does this black guy get roped into something like this? Is this his get out moment? Is this how they get him? <laughs> so they start, they start dinging the, the spoon in the tea and he starts fucking rubbing lube on fat white asses. Yeah, dude, lick her ass in front of all these people. Yeah. He doesn't know what's happening. Which can increase the pleasure. Wow, she's not into kissing part. He's grabbing his tea. Yeah, she thought, I think, that they were just going to slide around and laugh together and now she's getting her butthole blown in by this fucking stranger. No, I think she's into it. I think I think they're he they're they're I think what he's doing is they're saying like play it close, just don't connect. Uh she seems giggly and he seems like he's trying to get and she seems like she's never going in for no, it. No, 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 she's Oh, he's 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 loosening her up, dude. He's getting his hands all over. <laughs> oh, there, he, there she goes. There she goes. Let's all take a deep breath together. God damn. Let's just go along. Well, we know why Black Lou looked at this. God damn, dude. I would steam this chick's clam. Yeah. yeah dude. That's the best way to get the smells out. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Christ. I'd more air fry it. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait. She has a little cellulite in her ass. She's gross. Good. <laughs> Fuck you, pig. Yeah, that's what I do. You find the one thing. You go, oh, you know what? There's a couple dimples when she did that. Her ass sucks, dude. Fuck this chick. Why she got a black toenail? She stubbed her toe. Well, fuck her then. Get her out of here. Yeah, she's I don't care slob. if it'll grow back. Yeah, let the blacks have our slobs. <laughs> <laughs> No, they're both porn stars, apparently. Who is the Isaiah guy? Matt Weirdly, Lowe I mean, the, the, and Aaliyah Love. No, back it up significantly when this guy comes back on the screen again, and I want to hear. So, they're rubbing around oil, and a guy in a tuxedo is. Oh, yeah, back up more. I want to see the things that go with his body motions. A guy in a tuxedo is narrating. I guarantee this is the guy that invented no, the second time he comes shows up. This that he invented this. The guy narrated invented this stuff, and I get I can't, he looks he discovered it by accident, like flubber in his garage. <laughs> it's silly, buddy. <laughs> now it's you no, put this girl's butt on a newspaper and pull up the funnies. This isn't what he was trying to do. No. He was like, oh god, fuck! I stumbled into this. The like, best thing I can get you, dude, is a couple porn stars just riding around <laughs> your stupid goop. <laughs> He's like, this stuff was supposed to change the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was gonna be clean energy. <laughs> Holy shit. Now it's just making this poor girl's father furious. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to see this tuxedo guy talk. Other things from a sex ed perspective. If you're straddling your partner and you squeeze with your thigh muscles, now with magic though, you just might pop right off. Do I, hope, I, wish he, I wish the guy was more like, accidentally racist. Now I know what you're thinking. Why is Catherine here fucking the help? Well... <laughs> The help was the only person willing to slap on this goop and <coughs> Excuse me, Jesus. You're Sorry. a tiny... Muscles, oh. Your arm muscles to push and pull, to squeeze your thighs. That gets us more into our pelvic floors as well. So now, you know, if you're kind of into the dry humping, if you've got maybe a little Justin Timberlake on, the music's rocking. Oh my God. Using your legs and your arms to push and pull, I want to do it. I want to narrate live sex. I mean, dude, he's he's talking about like it's oil. You you what? You could do this with any oil. He's saying it's exercise to do what they're doing. That's what he's trying to say. You're working your core by sliding up. Oh, that's what this is. Well, that's, what he's, that's what he's saying. It is. You can't exercise with a so fucking real. rod, dude. Is yeah, that look. her? Yeah, that's the two of them. That's also exercise. Oh, okay, so they've already banged. Yeah. Yeah, but she didn't seem that into it. No, I, I, I disagree. I, I feel like they were just like, guys, you can't fuck up here. Christine, don't put it on if you're not going to go to the cum shot. I always want to. I want to believe my theory that black guys don't shoot big loads of cum. It's a theory I have. <laughs> oh, she's so hot. Are you kidding? She looks like Alicia uh, Cuthbert. Yeah, uh, Christine, the cum shot, please. <laughs> no, I know, but you went back for some reason. I was enjoying the cum shot. Jay, don't make it weird. I just want to see this guy's batch. <laughs> 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 oh, that's, that was pretty good. That was decent. That was we gotta decent. get you pregos. That guy's got a rod, man. Holy yeah, well, no, shit. listen. I, I always feel the problem is black dicks are so big that most of the sperm just fucking evaporates before it gets to the hole. <laughs> Such so a long journey. This is the theory? It's that going out so fast. <laughs> it's going out so fast that it fucking just like uh, just vaporizes. And then, only, and then only a couple dribbles come out. That you was ever a nice, see, he popped a nice one. That wasn't there. bad at all. Yeah. Black guys sometimes in porn... I mean, what the way they ring out their dickheads is crazy. 
I mean, really, when they're coming, it's such a little drip that comes out, but they like, like they're getting right. the end of a toothpaste out. I feel like a bigger dick has less sensitivity. Like you can really wring a bigger dick out. I guess it so, wouldn't hurt dude. as bad as if it was smaller. Nothing makes me feel more insignificant and insecure than watching a black guy have his dickhead and his entire fist squeezing it. Just his dickhead. I know. <laughs> his dickhead <laughs> takes up his whole fist, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> God damn it! My fist around my dick is touching balls. <laughs> You can't see your dick anymore. <laughs> Jay's dick is weird. It just looks like a fist. <laughs> There's no dick part. It's a fist with balls? <laughs> it's a horrid, horrid birth defect. <laughs> Let this guy talk some more. They're doing great. Maybe a round of applause. There they go. I'm, I'm interested what... How's it going over here? This is where I can see like. It'd be great if they get up and fall. Would make me so happy. What's your, what's your, what do you like about Magic Town? Makes me really horny. I really wish we could have sex right now. It's just between all of us and Facebook Live. Who's that girl? Why are I so sunken in? And then, and then, sir. I mean, is it? How's it going? The porn chick. It looks like her eyes are like fucking inside of her, like um, way too far inside her head. They're they're far apart, and it gives off the illusion of a of a sunken eye. <laughs> uh, but I think Jay it was like I've dealt with this before. Jay, what you're seeing there is, <laughs> let, guys, if I may. <laughs> Dude, did you ever see the the? Uh, did you ever see the It's Only Sunny when he goes when D's like when uh, D goes? Uh, I know I look like a bird, right? And uh, Dennis goes, uh, or Matt goes, actually, Dennis. Or he goes, actually, Dennis, I've been thinking more recently, a fish. Her eyes are so far apart. <laughs> they're almost on either side of her head. <laughs> Which, I, you know what the bummer of uh, Always Sunny is? I mean, not a bummer, but it's a weird thing right. that's going on. Is like D clearly has had a complete facial reconstruction. I keep hearing that from people. And saying that. it's just like... Why would her character do that? You know what I mean? Right. Like, you watch the character do that, but it's somebody who, like, it's not acknowledged at all. Right. And whatever. But, I mean, like, it's just odd. What are you laughing at, Lou? Have you seen the same thing? I'm talking about oh, something else awesome. <clears throat> More black people rubbing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, some funny stuff. Shane Coyle? No, my brother-in-law just texted me and said that he got in the car with the in-laws right as you were talking about the coming, the black guys coming thing. <laughs> um, and it was fucking hilarious, he said. Well, the if they're still if they're still listening. Sorry, sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> no, not Lou. He's gentle on his own penis. <laughs> yeah, Lou. Do you got a you got a swinging fucking axe between your legs? Come on, dude. You yes, but I, I, he's actually right. I I don't come a lot. Really? I don't know what that is. I thought it was just me when you said that. I'm surprised. Buddy, I, I'll be honest with you though. I'm fucking. I'm load to load. I really can't knock it down. So like, I'm always good. Sometimes. It's a fu rarely is it a distance and volume of batch. Sometimes it's distance a little bit. Sometimes it's big batch falling right down below my dick, just almost leaking out. And then sometimes a, a weird thing in between, but it's a rainbow. Does the size of the batch like have anything to do with the intensity of the orgasm? No, I always believe it's it. Really I believe connected? I believe if the pussy's not that good, that you just don't come a lot, and you know. I never tell you that because I feel bad. <laughs> I'm just like, oh no, I jerked off 17 times today. Sorry, it's not you. I think it does. I think the more I, the more that comes out, the the longer the orgasm is. Mine's pretty consistent size wise, and it's and consistency wise too. I have a more of a liquidy. My consistency is a uh, uh, drop. My consistency is consistent, but uh, the actual size of the yeah, it's all over the place. And sometimes I feel there's a science to it. Where you try to like get a few in the chamber, like batch up, but don't finish, a couple times. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't want to make a face so you don't understand what I'm saying. I don't want to. You know what I'm saying? Like just like, I jerk off to not complete, just knock it around a little bit, get it hard for a second in the shower even, and then yeah, just like, you. and then just go away from it. I feel like somehow that like, gets like you know a couple up in the chamber. It That's sounds like. Right. But, but I could tell one thing is when I I'm gonna shoot a big long one. I can't believe it's like we're. You guys were talking about this in the car, and we're getting way deeper with it. But the uh, the the firing out sometimes you could feel almost that like the the timing and rhythm was perfectly right for you. Like you could feel like oh this is going to be like a distance mm -hmm. heavy shot versus like sometimes you're like here it goes and it's just like you just time the rhythm wrong. It's almost like you just the up pull that should have been the back pull and whatever it is like just times it and just I mean like a drip comes out sometimes. 
That, that doesn't that, that doesn't happen to me. You might want to get that checked out. You might be sick. Uh, you know what my jizz? <laughs> so the doctor's gonna be like, masturbate for me, son. Like I don't know, doc. This is I don't like this yeah. one bit. And then somebody comes out and goes, this is the accountant's agency, folks. <laughs> Worst trip to my account ever. <laughs> DJ, this is a foot doctor. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Let this guy talk a little more. After playing in the shower too, I'm just going to say, safety third. <laughs> Make sure you have one of those little mats on the bottom of your shower, because this is going to get really slippery. It'll be slippery on your body. It's, it's uh, non-toxic. It's body safe. So for penetrative sex... Like, let's just say the bikinis flew off at home. You know, like Dr. Ruth said, I want you to do this at home. <laughs> oh, fuck. I hate this fucking dude. Penetrate. He's awful. That's fine. It's safe with... I guarantee gel. you, too, um, he wore that tux because he thought it would be, like, funny. You think so? I, absolutely. He was like, he was like, he's like, no, man, we're selling sex here. Dr I'm going to dress it up. It'll be funny. D dude, have you ever seen what porn, like, active porn stars think is funny? Like they always think like that, like jokes about this. Like they, they're it's the, the worst sense of humor I've ever encountered. Yeah, David Tell. I always say I wanted to host the AVN Awards, Ugh. and he was like, "Dude, he goes, you can't make fun of them. Like they, they won't get it. Yeah, like they're not going to laugh." And I, I always, I, I tend to disagree, though. I think, I think you can go up there and like bust balls the industry and do it. I, dude, I think that that would be the worst fucking show of all time. I really don't have any interest 100%. in doing it because if I was yeah. going to do it, I'd want the the perk to be that it's like you're going to run around and. Porn stars might blow you and shit like that, but it's just I'm not really in that world. It would uh, be so fucking broy. Yeah, it would be yeah, so yeah. fucking like yeah, Ed Hardy and, shirts and shit. Yeah, yeah, like airheads and meatheads, just all in. Oh my god, it would just think. I think you can only. I think the only time like they invite we, Alexis, have gas, we have a gas digital booth at uh, Exotica every year. I've never gone to. I'm like I don't care. Alexis really. Fox is a friend of mine. She still works. She's cool as shit. You can joke with her. Like and she's a cool, down to earth person. Yeah, like you know, Lisa Ann too. It's like they're. I don't ever met Lisa, so I don't know. But like I'm, so, I'm not. So I'm, so I'm not. Obviously, I'm not saying everybody. But I'm just like you. You. You look at that AVNs thing. And I'm just like, oh my god. Well, it's a shame. You feel like they. It, it. I'd rather it was like a more organized, like good thing. The AVN Awards, to some degree, t to prove wrong that, you, that most people believe that like it's just damaged people being fucked up in the moment because that's what it is when you watch the avn awards it all looks people accepting awards like that you know like they're like thank you for loving my fucking asshole that could take so much cock i love it it's bye so, bye bitches and like they walk off and you're like <laughs> you know it just seems so like yeah. they're just they're still playing the character like as they walk through that life and it's like dude just be a per like it's up there if, with, you, if you if it felt more business like in some weird way you'd be like oh good better in some you know what I mean it's up there with like the Spike TV awards when they used to do like the Man Awards it's like you dipshit like Max this is, magazine dude yeah dude it's all that stupid shit Hooters <clears throat> yeah FHM. Hooters all that fucking dumb shit the um it's crazy though because I met um I can't remember her name now but the chick that had the spider webs tattooed on her boobs Bonnie Rotten Bonnie Rotten I met Bonnie a bunch of times through Eddie she's Fucking gorgeous. She's beautiful. Like facially, beautiful. in person, was one of the prettiest girls. Yeah, I just she's, like, she's like absolutely beautiful. I didn't know who it was at first, and I was just like, she had like, a, like her face was yeah. up, but in porn and everything. Her face looks that amazing. Yeah, she's great. But Doesn't I met her a few times doing Eddie Ifs podcast, and she was good friends with Eddie, and she was pretty wild on the shows and stuff. I mean, she wasn't crazy, but she would do some wild shit. But anyway, she I just watched after Porn Ends Part Three. She's high volume squirter. She's dude. She's totally. She lives in like Minnesota now. Yeah. With her daughter, and she like like she's one of those. She's one of those chicks that took like. She doesn't denounce it, but she took a hard turn out, and she's yeah. like, no. Nope. She's like, I, I'm here with my daughter. This is what I do now. Um, a lot of Asia Carrera did that. But most people don't. Not leave. Asia Carrera. Most people don't leave does and go mean? like it might be yeah. She's yeah. Like, she left the business, but yeah, she's like wealthy she married a wealthy guy i think or something or she no oh, she did start, yeah she does something also a single mom and she she and after porn ends one she starts crying about like she's like i get absolutely discriminated against when they find out what i used to do for sure but yeah. i mean but not even just that but a, a lot of them also like, most of them don't leave the industry going like that was great you know what i mean like they all tend to leave and be like it was fucking ridiculous. They'll take, I respect they'll, ta they'll take the dreads of society, so then you get like China. Remember China from wrestling? Well, yeah, that's the. It's problem. like doing porn. You're just like, well, you let that happen. It's like you're definitely 
helping someone facilitate their own demise. Look, I mean, like, but here's the thing: it's an enter- it's entertainment like any other business. The, the business we're in will do that too. Entertainment's the wrong word they'll, for it. I think it's function. It's it's, it's a functional purpose. But my, here's my point. I'm saying that it, it operates like an entertainment industry. Sure. It will, our industry will chew up fucking children and spit them out. and does sure. give, You know, you hear these stories about, like, fucking Joni from Happy Days blowing her fucking brains out in a fucking camper. Yeah. You know, whatever it is. Or however she, it was suicide. I can't remember how she, or was it? Aaron, it doesn't Aaron, matter. Aaron Moran? Yeah, was she died. Aaron Moran suicide? She died. I think it was suicide. Anyway, the point is, is um, there, are, there are women and men that uh, take it by the fucking reins and know what they're doing. Like, it's one of the things I like about Alexa. She's very, she's like Sasha Gray, where she's just like, no, I'm doing this because I want to explore this and I think it's awesome and when I'm done, I'll be done. And that's it. Sure. I am in complete fucking control of this. Then you meet other ones that are like... Is she not a drug addict? Oh, that's the other no, one. Most dude, of them, most, no. dude, most of them have significant drug no, problems. No, no, no. She, she loves weed. She doesn't Major drink. alcohol problems. She loves weed. She doesn't drink. She was like in the Air Force. <laughs> like, she, she like... But she's somebody that's like, I know what this is, and I know what I'm doing. And it's like, if you have that attitude and take, you'll be fine. But then these other chicks going in, it's like when you see a comedian putting selfies up, nothing but selfies on Instagram. It's like, it's like, dude, if if this is all your worth is, you're fucked. Yeah, you're fucked. I used to be friendly with uh, one. Of the, she'd come out to my show sometimes and hang out. She liked hanging out with me, I think, because like, I'm a person. Exactly who who I am and what I do. Mm-hmm. If it was anybody else, like, and this girl's hanging out, like, are definitely gonna try to make the move on her. Like, I would. Bunny Love from the uh, Bunny Ranch. Do you remember? I the, think I know her? who she, she was. Is. Cool. She was in the show Cat House at one point, but then she like she left it. Like, the first time I met her, she worked there still, and then by the time she started coming and hanging out at shows and stuff, she was uh, not working there anymore and out of that business. But like, such a pretty girl. And uh, just seems so like, like I said, and she like coming out. I think because I was one person not going like. So I guess after the show we'll go. Because I was like, I'm not going to ask her to fucking get rejected. That's going to make me feel like, or God forbid, she offers to do it for money. Mm-hmm. I'll be heartbroken. So I'm like, I've never even thought about asking. So I think, it, but said, so, and she always seemed like cool. She got it. She was like, yeah, that place sucked, and it was just like. Well, that's I think. That's... Like, but she was all the Dennis Hoff stuff too. She's like, yeah, like I was like, I thought it was weird when you girls first came in. I was very judgmental because like you have to call him daddy. She was like. Ugh. He paid for everything, that and then we were, she goes, he paid for everything on these trips, and that was like his thing he wanted you to do, so it's like, she's like, I'm just trying to get my money just so I, I can live. I, she was like a snowboard chick from... I, that yeah. guy, to me, was a fucking creep. Do you have a picture of Bunny Love? I don't care. I don't care how many people, you know, said he was a great guy. He was a fucking creep. I talked to him a couple times. He had a creepy fucking vibe. He would say creepy shit. I do. Like, like he's the same thing as the guy. He was a creep. He's yeah. the same thing as the guy who. Uh, I think it's that Brian Regan thing. Uh, I think I've told you that story before, where I brought a. I, t- I brought I invited a bartender from a strip club that was across the street from Caroline's that I knew, mm-hmm. and he would bring the owner. I met the owner through this guy, and when I was the owner of what. This like shitty strip oh, club. Stri- oh, okay. I'm yeah, sorry. and okay. he was just a guy. Like, I don't know why I hated it so much, but I did. There she is. Oh yeah, that's. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Wasn't she in the Kevin Smith movie? Mm. No, I'm thinking of somebody else. In, no. in the porn one. No, uh, but, but these matter. two were like his girlfriends together at the time. Okay. Yeah, she was cute as shit. Yeah. And uh, and like, where was I with the other thing? Oh. You brought. Oh, oh yeah, the owners of those, those kind of places. Like, and I think Dennis Hoff was the same kind of guy. It was like. He he think would be impressing me, and he'd be like, "Hey, you see the new girl? Uh, we got a new girl hired." And I go, "Oh, cool. Okay." I didn't go there to get dance. If everyone in there it was like literally to have like a beer with the bartender. Right, right. And uh, Pete, his name was, but the owner would come out and he goes, "Yeah, look at the new girl." And she'd come out and like just like the most blank look on their face, and like turn her around, like spread her ass cheeks open, like making her like <laughs> pussy open and close, like, "Ah, eh, look at that, like fucking fat ass." Right. <laughs> like, oh. Like slap under her titties and shit. And you're like, yeah, it's gross, dude. Like, please dude. stop doing this. It's like, fucking gross. She, and the girl was just sitting there, like, this is what happens. But I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like, yeah. Like he's like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I go, sweetie, get the fuck out of here. Whatever it is, apologize yeah. to your parents. Do something. Just get the fuck out of here. Yeah, it's fucking gross. Yeah, Hoff said to me once. I only met him two or three times, but he didn't know me at all. So, so I'm not talking out of school here. This was not said to me in confidence. Mm-hmm. He was just fucking talking the way he talks. But we were at the cellar all hanging out, and everybody went inside, and I was just alone with him at a table outside. And we saw this girl walk by, 19, 20, and he goes, oh, yeah, see her over there? Man, goddamn, I could turn her out in 10 minutes flat. And I was like, oh, this guy's a fucking pimp. Yeah. He's a fucking pimp. 
He tries to act like it's this, but no. At the end of the day, he's a fucking pimp. And he's one of those guys. And he's one of those guys. Like all you see is like the he's wealthy, the fun loving. Like oh, I got the girls around me. Dude. I bet the fire that comes down from him is like. He like oh, I, when I, he gets I, mad? I bet they're so mentally abused from like crazy. You know, I bet it's like, well, girls, you broke. You know, everyone's got to be home at midnight, and uh, I don't like that. You know, what I mean, he all wanted them to have like a also like a boyfriend ship to him. Dude, he was crazy. It's just so dumb, too. I think he was a with- gross guy. Cross the board, I never like him and Ron Jeremy, both I, I, yeah. both of them, both him and Ron Jeremy, I'm like, you guys are skeezy motherfuckers. Man. Yeah, Ron, Ron. He's gross. I thought I would like him more. He's uh, he's yeah. gross. I've seen him a few times at the Rainbow in, in L.A. That's and I'm where, just we, like, that's where yeah. we just we just saw him last time we were there together. Yeah, yeah. And, he, uh, and by the way, sorry, uh, Lou, but we were uh, outside, and he was like falling, falling asleep. asleep, like standing up. He's just so gross. He's got and, narcolepsy. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying he's just standing there just... He's got all these people. He looks so sickly and bad. I mean, he was, he was drugged up. It wasn't more just a narcolepsy. It's he was, a thing. He was, he was like fucking like like uh, it was crazy. This is the biggest turnoff to me. With 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 cause, and we. I remember talking to you about this when it was when I lived with you, when they had the Bunny Ranch reality show, mm-hmm. and I was just like, this is so fucking base. Like like every single thing they did was sex infused. Like and I just I don't mean like sex things going on at the bar. I mean like any just normal activity so like every time they had a toast for like a birth like the birthday party the cake was shaped like a pussy yeah and yeah, the yeah, to- yeah exactly and then Dennis Hoff's toast would be like may all your ups and downs be between the sheets and may you fuck in heaven before the devil and I was like and also but even these things that would be like and then every day at noon we have the horsetail butt plug champagne party and the you know outside so everyone's got to come in with like horse I mean I'm making that up but just yeah it was it was always but it was stuff like that it was and, always like themed and by the way i'm not saying i think sex work is dumb i think it's dumb like that's like when a comedian is like fuck he's a civilian he fuck. shut up shut the yeah. fuck up shut stop like somebody that lives their job 24 7 it's like you're a fucking idiot no, you don't yeah. have any other side to you than this everything you do has to be an extension of this dumb fucking yeah, it's work like, like a big pink shirt and like two girls that are clearly fucking you because they owe you something <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what my, he got me a grand slam earlier, so I got to fuck it. My thing of all that, with that stuff, too, is that I'm always intrigued by guys. There's that We never got into that, that whole Netflix show. It's like, uh, I forget what it's even called, but it was like old people with young people and couples, like crazy age gap couples. Oh, okay. And I'm, always blown, I'm always blown away by, we've talked about it on the show, though, this concept, just the, the wealthy, either ugly and sort of young, but particularly old and like geezery, running around with like a fake titted twenty six year old holding hands on a beach, taking them on these big vacations. I'm like, I get it all, but that's a lot. For, why don't you just have a girl? It's all that. Have her come and fuck you once in a while and enjoy like buddies or something. I don't understand like being with a girl who's like, as soon as that money, if, if anything happened with the money right out, she'd leave emotionlessly. Right. Dude, I'm like, those, none, none of those girls give two fucks about Dennis Hoff. Right. Not any one of them. Right. right. But at the time, he'd say, these are my girlfriends. That girl, Bunny Love, he'd say, this is my girlfriend. Like, she would be like, well, like what? He, he was in the documentary American Pimp. I mean, he was like a proud Oh, okay. Pimp. So he was proud. Okay. I, I didn't know that he was... was uh, it's like a pimp that acts like a... It's you know, legal in Vegas. It's just legal. The yeah. brothels, it's like you're, there's generally a madam, so it's like at least it's a woman pimping him out and kind of taking care of him when you <coughs> well, put that's a man got... into that position. No, he's not, like, though. disgusting. He, he's the overseer of the whole thing and definitely, like, I'm sure, used the girls to whatever, forever, whatever he wants. He actually told Howard Stern before he fucks every girl that's come in there. Yeah, probably like, that's probably like, oh, I need to test out the merchandise. I agree. I think it's exactly what it is. I know, it's like if you're a girl and you're, you know, it's a hard thing. It's like you're well, getting you yourself you find, into a job where your body's merchandise well, and you your also boss find out, is like... But you find out you're going to make like, exactly, they're, like, they're making like a couple grand a week. $40. You know what? <laughs> 40 Well, it's $40. also... <laughs> that, Ladies, that, don't be hookers. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the day, let's not hook. That's interesting that you bring up American Pimp because I think that's what annoyed or bothered me the most about that guy. It's like, be what the fuck it is, dude. Stop acting like you've dressed, you know, that you're doing some heightened version of... It's like, go be a fucking street pimp and just be like, I'm a fucking pimp. You know what I mean? He was a TV, like, he had a TV series about it. He was a celebrity. He was made into that. Same thing. Hugh Hefner is like a disgusting pig with rules and girlfriends, and people admired him. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're all... When you meet him, they're all... They're all... Sleazy, They're like gross men with intimacy issues. I have a real... I really like... 
I fucking like clam up when I'm around that kind of creep because I, cause I don't. I'm not looking for a confrontation about it. And at the same time, I'm just like, I don't know what to say because I'm like, oh, this guy's like, it's a fucking weird situation. We said all that Corey Feldman stuff. Like, he's doing a weird thing with those fucking chicks. I don't fucking... Yeah, he's abusing chicks because he's an abused guy. I and tell, it's finding somebody, I I say, find abused, somebody more but... clueless than you to worship you. It's like, right now, they're in a college, and the college is called Corey's Angels. Oh, my God. <laughs> the, uh, I, I, uh... I mean, look, I did it. Pl- I, I did it plenty in the past. You shouldn't be a grown up with but rules. I did it plenty in the past with strip clubs and all that shit. But I mean, I go into. I don't. I won't spend a fucking dime in one anymore. I go in. The girls come up to me. I go, listen, you're very nice. I'm letting you know right now, this is not my thing. Once but you're you, there because you're somebody who kind of yeah, took you. Somebody, yeah, yeah, that's you know, I'll buy drinks and shit, but I'm not fucking Lewis. getting let. Don't waste your time. Me either. You're not getting anything out of me. I went with Lewis. I'll tip. I'll throw the dollars up and all that shit, but yeah. I'm not buying private dances. I, I went, got pretty bummed out. Last two times I've gone in, I mean, more than a decade, uh, since actually the one before that was when we all went with Bobby Kelly and Bill Burr, like, you know, way back yeah, in the yeah, day, yeah. fucking 17 years ago or whatever. Jesus Christ. Uh, 16 yeah. years ago, I know. It's Almost 18 too. years ago. Yeah. Jesus fuck. Yeah, fucking nutty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Anyway. But we went to do that uh, again. We went to that strip club. After that, I went with Christine in Philly once because a guy that was a fan worked there and did like a whole... He gave us like a back room full of booze and food for free. It was all just like... Just yeah, took the girls. Awesome. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. We smoke inside and everything. It was nuts. Uh, me and Christine hooked up. That was fantastic. It was great. It was a great time in a strip club. Right. Then I went with Lewis a couple like months ago now in Texas, and it was like fun. Like, but it was like it just is all depressing as shit to walk around and say it's just the girls. Like, first of all, the smoking section for this place was outside, also for the dancers. So they got to go outside with all the customers too. So they can't even get a break and yeah. smoke. Then they're smoking yeah. in ill lighting. And so, so you know, <laughs> you got to watch some chicken in a neon bikini chatter and smoke. Not just that, but a neon yeah. bikini, and like now you all of a sudden see her C section scar and yeah, her fucking, yeah. the fucking the hair yeah. that she has on her ass cheeks for some reason, and just by just stuff that you're like, it's just not what you're supposed to see. You know what I mean? Like there's supposed to be kind of like more of a mystery to this. But I just never, when I used to drive the girls to bachelor parties and stuff, I just got so disenchanted by that whole world. I'm like, it's such like they are being paid to do a thing. They don't like it. They don't like you. Did you ever see the movie Made with John Favreau and Vince Vaughn? A long Vaughan? time ago. Awesome movie, really funny. But uh, <coughs> they get into all that because he's dating Famke Jansen. She plays a stripper, and as the movie unfolds, they kind of get into like, you think this is all just, you think she's like the good one? Yeah. The boss is fucking all of them, and then he catches her at the end doing coke with the fucking John. Yeah. Like it's just like, ugh, it's fucking dark. That's man. a lot on the show Intervention, which I just love. The only bummer. When they actually get better at the end, that really bums me out. <laughs> it's the good ones are when they go back and they tell you that through the written word on the screen. Uh, and then my absolute favorite is when they do the duel. You do get to see them at the end of rehab, and they look fantastic, and their skin is good, and and, this, and they. Uh, I've got my children back. They say, and That's then nice. they go. Three days after that interview, she ran off into the woods, and no one's seen her in six months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Intervention, dude. <laughs> and my favorite, we watched it on here a while ago. I showed somebody again that recently that just makes me laugh so hard. When they did the one from the Indian Reservation, remember they talked to it. We talked about it on the show for sure, but they go to an Indian Reservation and, the, but it's just a regular like interventionist comes in from the show mm-hmm. and sitting in like a fucking throne that's made of like bear arms. <laughs> It's like it's, it's like bear's claws, and then she, and then he, she has to be up here. She, and when they're going around the intervention, it's real thing. It's like uh, uh, Uncle Tatanka, you would like to read your letter now. And he's like, I am very sad. <laughs> Things make me angry and upset. When you do them, I will no longer give you wampum in the teepee if you continue. And uh, and one of them was like, really, it's like. It's like uh, Uncle Running Fox. Please. <laughs> Where is Running Fox? We said we weren't going to start till Running Fox got Where here. Where is Running Fox? <laughs> here, sorry, guys. Running late. <laughs> uh, that's so I was running turtle today, if you know what I mean, guys. No, I'm just kidding. I have my letter. Um, you're killing yourself. I wish you would. St- oh, you know what? I got to do one more read while we're here. <clears throat> <laughs> do you know the quip? The makers of the Quip Electric Toothbrush want you to know the one single discovery that matters most for your dental care 
It's simply this. If you have good habits, you are good. That means brushing for two minutes twice a day and flossing regularly no matter what brand you use. But Quip makes that all very simple, starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste. Quip's electric, br <laughs> Quip's electric brush has sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer and 30-second pulses to guide it full and even clean. I don't think it's explained well. 30-second pulses tell you to switch quadrants. I've been quadrant brushing for, what has it been, like two years now? Yeah. With this Quip? I can't do it any other way now. It wigs me out to not do that. I was on it for a while. No, I don't have it anymore. If I forget of my Quip on the road and I just have my regular, like, vibrating toothbrush, mm -hmm. just generic one, I still, Quip is like, I, I feel like I blew it now if I don't do the 30 seconds and yeah. switch quadrants. Yeah. It's crazy. I never, yeah. my whole life, I just brush for, like, probably too long. I would just brush my teeth like six minutes, just nonstop, probably wailing on one side only the whole time. I go too short. That toothbrush helped me realize I was going way too short. Two minutes? You were under two minutes? Oh, dude. I'm, I'm 30 seconds in and out. I'm I know it's not enough. I'm possibly, if sunken into the couch enough while brushing my teeth, I'm possibly a half hour cartoon into brushing my teeth. Get well, out of here. I'll sit like this for a while and then I'll just start going again. A commercial comes on, I start fast forwarding and do the commercials start brushing again? Then you I get do all this in. shit in your mouth. Doesn't it? It's because it, it grows as you brush. You gotta yeah. spit. It turns out you don't have to. You can you, swallow. You know what? Am I a little dirty whore? Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I swallow. You're a nasty bitch. <laughs> anyway, what? quip. Sorry. Me? Me? <laughs> this is a bad commercial. <laughs> don't send this one, Jacob. <laughs> Quip delivers fresh brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping, so your routine is always right. Join over three million healthy mouths and get Quip today, starting at $25. If you go to getquip.com slash bonfire right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill for free at getquip com slash bonfire. It's Quip, the good habits company. They're good. They get it. Yeah, that took a... Took a weird turn that quick commercial. Sure did. You know what, dude? Don't send him that one. <laughs> I have to. There's so many good ones though. <laughs> no, it wasn't a bad read. Quip gets it. Do they though? No, I'm yeah. kidding. Yeah, yeah. I love it do. so much. I go over two minutes with it. Um, I can't. I've never heard of a man going past two minutes. Really? That's outrageous. <laughs> I was always told as I was a kid, three minutes was the time you're supposed to do. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Get, get right the fuck out of here. <laughs> Joe DeRosa, thank you for sitting in with me this week. Anytime, brother. Uh, you'll be back again real soon. Dan's going to be a hectic filming schedule. So thank we'll you. have a bunch of Joe DeRosa uh, in this this season. And you know what? Fun. You know what, Jay? Mm -hmm. I will go to Wayne's with you. Yeah! <laughs> We're going to go to Wayne's. Uh, Joe DeRosa is going to be at Soul Joel's Comedy Club in Royersford, Pennsylvania over Thanksgiving weekend. That's November 27th through Saturday, November 30th. No show oh, Thursday, obviously. And also, too, the Saturday before those shows, Roebling, New Jersey, as in this coming Saturday. This Roebling, Saturday. New Jersey. Yeah, uh, all, all the dates are at JoeDeRosaInfo.com. Ticket links as well. Hell yeah. And also, make sure you get Joe's album, I Go to Atlanta All the Time, available now wherever you download from. Only available for purchase, download. Not streaming. Uh, not streaming at all. And, uh, of course, we all know Danny's special, Son of a Gary, premiering Saturday, December 7th, my B-Day, 10 p.m. on HBO. If you are in the Syracuse area uh, this weekend, please, Friday and Saturday, me and Mike Fenoy are going to be at the Funny Bone. Uh, we make our triumphant return. Last time was a lot of weird things happened last time. It's an odd place, that Syracuse. <laughs> it's a real, it's just a real fart in the middle of this country, but I'll tell you. Come out. We'll have a good time. We're going to rock. And then on my birthday weekend, December 5th through the 7th, Laugh Boston. Boston comes through big every time. And Comedy Connection, Rhode Island, which I absolutely, one of my favorite clubs. Uh, December 19th through the 21st. Tickets for all that at BigJComedy.com. Uh, tomorrow, Lost Tapes uh, with me and Dan. We recorded earlier this week. And then I Dan's back on Monday? I believe so, yeah. And we'll have Dan back on the... Monday. The Unmasked of Dan Soto. That is absolutely right. Tight. That's why, yeah. That's why I moved my weekend to Friday, Saturday to go to Dan's uh, Unmasked. Are you coming at the stand? I can't go tomorrow. You can't? I can. Oh. Tomorrow night? Yeah. I might be able to come to that, too. Yeah, yeah. Ron know. Bennington's Unmasked awesome. of, Dan, of Dan Soder to get ready for a special. And he's the best. Ron Bennington's so great. Mm -hmm. It's going to be amazing. So, yeah, I, I wanted to go to that. So, 
Uh, sorry, Syracuse. No Thursday show that you weren't going to come to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my bad. I don't have to go to bed feeling like shit at 10 p.m. in a, another stupid city. Oh, uh, dude, just surrounded by every every burger on the Wendy's menu. You're like, I'll just pick at these. I have nothing to do. <laughs> I have I'll to create the, a buffet in my room. I'll get the five different kinds and I'll have a little of each. <laughs> That's why I, I always tell Christine. No, I just get 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 four orders of fries, and get each different kind they have. Some of the cheese, and what does that have a little meat for us? Yeah, dude. I got two sandwiches from Potbelly today. One with extra meat, and I was like, I won't eat all of it. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gone. Fuck dude. you, dude. <laughs> um. All right. Catch you on Monday. Peace.